Hey, Raven. I have a glitch that I wanted to share with you that happened to me here only a couple of months ago, and it was seriously creepy to me, so hopefully you enjoy it. This happened on a family vacation slash road trip a few months ago. This was our first trip since COVID started, and we were all very eager to escape the monotony of quarantine. We planned a weekend getaway, and I remember that all of us were super eager to get out and have a great time. The first day of the trip was pretty normal. A lot of fun times, a lot of fun memories between all of us. I guess I should mention that there was four of us. Myself, 16 and female, my mom and dad, and then my younger sister who was nine. It was a pretty long day though, so the hotel that my parents had booked was a welcoming warmth that it made us feel right at home. Now, for this story to make sense, I kind of have to explain how the hotel room was set up. The room was painted a nice pastel blue. It was a really spacious and inviting room. It had two beds that had really pretty dark blue covers. It was a large enough room to have a couch that was also blue, off to the side facing the television. In the bathroom, there was this really large ornate mirror. Like, it had a really pretty and fancy-looking frame that it was around it. I remember looking at that mirror and thinking about how nice it was. And lastly, there was a TV mounted to the wall, above the desk that was in the room that was decently sized. After settling in, I pulled out my Nintendo Switch and I laid out on the couch to play some Animal Crossing. My sister was laying in our bed that we were supposed to share, and my parents were in the other bed. It was like 10 and they were all super tired, as was I, but I needed to take care of my island first. Yes, I have a problem. I got a little too involved in the game and started to doze off myself. Thankfully, I was awake enough to save my game, and after that, I literally passed out hard on the couch. This is where things go from this nice vacation evening to honestly terrifying. When I woke up, I felt disoriented and confused, and not the normal disorientation that happens when you wake up in a hotel room. When I opened my eyes, the first thing I saw was my sister in front of me. Not like standing in front of me, but lying on the bed, because I was somehow in the bed. I thought, okay, maybe I got up in the middle of the night and got into bed and just don't remember? Maybe I sleepwalked or something? Weird, but not horribly alarming. Then it started to get alarming. When I finally got my eyes fully opened and was cognizant, I noticed that the blankets on the bed were no longer a nice blue. They were an ugly cream color. I tried to shake this off again, as maybe I just mistook what I saw. I was pretty certain that wasn't the case, but I had to just tell myself that and move on. I stood up, and I started walking towards the bathroom, when I noticed that where the couch was, was now a single black recliner. I paused and stared at this chair for several moments, trying to think back to the night before. I know for a fact I was lying on the couch, but yet now there was no couch just this black chair, and sitting right there in the chair was my Nintendo Switch. I looked to the wall opposite the chair, and there was a TV there, but it was no longer mounted. It was just sitting on top of a dresser. The desk was also gone. The last thing I noticed when I glanced over was the fact that the walls were no longer that inviting pastel blue. It was that cheap apartment tan color. This was the point where I started to have a mini panic attack. I could shrug off waking in the bed and nod on the couch. I could move past the color of the blankets being different, but a whole couch just not existing? That was too much for me. 
I sped up and ran into the bathroom to splash my face with water to try to keep myself calm. I did so just staring down at the sink and breathing, telling myself it was going to be okay. Then, I reached over to grab a towel and went to dry my face off, which is when I looked up at the mirror. That really nicely framed, ornate, decorated mirror was gone and in its place was one of those flat, affixed to the wall with little clips, mirror slabs. The kind that are just a thin piece of glass and lay flat against the wall. I felt a painful chill run down my spine as I tried to make sense of what the hell I was seeing. Was I dreaming? Hallucinating? As cliche as it is, I actually pinched myself on the arm to see if I was dreaming. But it hurt, and reality didn't change. I actually stuck my head out and called out to my mom, and I asked her if she remembered the mirror in the bathroom. And she laughed and was like, The mirror? What about it? It's a mirror. I mentioned the nice frame that was on it, and she just said, No, it was just one of those cheap hotel mirrors. I then mentioned the couch, and she said, you mean the chair? What about it? Neither her nor my dad or sister recalled anything about the room from the night before. None of them thought the room looked any different. After a bit of me trying to say, hey guys, the room changed, I let it go, because none of them seemed to notice anything amiss. I just ate my breakfast in silence and packed up my stuff ready to get out of this place. One last thing to note, I can perfectly visualize the original room. The blue walls, the blue blankets, the blue couch, the mounted TV, as well as that ornate mirror. I remember it all very vividly, and I was able to actually confirm that they did have a room that looked like that. We just didn't stay there. When we got back, I googled the hotel and I checked out their website, and the demo room on the page was the exact room that I remembered, but it only had one bed. I showed my mom the picture of the bathroom and mentioned the mirror. She said it was nice, but that the hotel room we stayed in looked nothing like that. From what I found out on the website, this is what they are remodeling all the rooms to look like. Basically, they're upgrading things and making them look nicer. We had apparently stayed in a room that hadn't yet been updated. So, that's my weird story. It was really strange to me that the room does exist. That the hotel does have rooms that look like that. But it wasn't one that we stayed in. Why can I remember being in that room that we apparently were never in? The room will look like that in the future, as they are upgrading their rooms to be that style. So, did I shift to a timeline where that hasn't happened yet? I honestly have no explanation for this, and any thoughts would be more than welcomed. I've started writing this story and thought about submitting it probably five or six times now, but I always kind of chicken out at the last minute. This happened to me over ten years ago now, when I was in grade school, so I think I always worry a bit that it'll be thrown out because I was a kid, which is really kind of dumb because I know you've covered stories of things that happened when the submitter was young before. But I'm an inherently anxious person, so I overthink things. I am particularly inclined to say that this really happened, though, because my mom still remembers it, too. When I was in, I think, the seventh grade, my mom was driving me home from school. We live on the outskirts of a suburb in the American Midwest, a nice area overall that bordered a lot of fields and open farmland. I was going to a private Christian school a little further into the main suburbs, 
but we lived in the more country-like part of the area, so my mom would pick me up after school every day to take me home. We didn't run buses, so I know now how much of an inconvenience this probably was in hindsight, but I always enjoyed the time, watching the exits of Targets and coffee shops turn to Walmarts and fast food, and then to a stray gas station between patches of trees and neighborhoods, before ending as an open field. We would use this time to talk. I'm an only child, so me and my mom have always been particularly close. I would talk about what we learned in school that day, something funny that happened at lunch, or the latest drama that I really needed to vent that day. I was bullied as a kid, I will admit, which made it really nice to have a mom so willing to listen to me. And she would talk to me about the conversations that had popped up between her and my grandma that day, since she was employed as a caretaker for her. We'd also talk a lot about our favorite shows. My dad grew up on a healthy diet of comic books and Star Wars, something which he was very intent to pass on to me and my mom by proxy. I was never a super huge fan of Star Wars, which is blasphemy in certain circles, but at the time, I had fallen in love with Doctor Who and Star Trek. I also think this might have even been around when Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was airing, and I still remain a passionate MCU fan. So, with both of us watching the sci-fi shows nightly, Mom found herself dragged along with us into this abyss that is fandom culture. All this is to say that me and my mom, being alone together in our car that day, were big sci-fi fans, but otherwise weren't in any sort of altered mental state. So we were about at the junction point between gas station suburb and Walmart suburb. I don't remember what we were talking about at this point, maybe I was even on my iPod or something. But when we turned a corner, I remember Mom making a little gasping sound, her eyes landing on the space over one of the buildings and saying, Johnny, is that a blimp? I looked up, and yeah, there was a blimp, silver and moving slowly in the distance. It was oblong, metallic, literally a textbook picture of a blimp. It was flying pretty low to the ground, probably two miles above the trees at most, so it was taking up a solid portion of the sky to our side. It looked like maybe what a blimp hanging decoration would look like in a kid's room. I don't know how best to describe it, but I want to be clear that this was a notable blimp. People would see it, and while we were hitting the outer edges of the suburbs, we still had traffic around us. This was a weird event in and of itself. I'd seen pictures of the Hindenburg and the like, but I had never seen a blimp actually in person before. So, at this point, me and my mom were just kind of chatting excitedly. Like, oh my god, that's so cool. What a weird thing. I wonder if notable country store slash park near us is having an event or something. We kept going along our usual path, and the blimp followed at that perfect speed, where it never looked like it moved to us, even as the buildings in front of us changed. It must have seemed to hang in the air with us for probably a solid two, three minutes, which now seems short, but at the time seemed like such a long amount of time. We hit a patch of trees right before the last gas station pre-fields, concealing the blimp from view for a moment. And we got around them and looked back, and there wasn't a blimp. We were shocked. Mom pulled off into the gas station so that we could circle back around, but no matter what way we looked at it, however many double takes we did, there was no blimp. I must emphasize that driving past this patch of trees took maybe five seconds max. I'm writing this like we were completely calm and collected, but no. <laughs> We were literally shouting our disbelief at each other, each looking around frantically, but no matter where we looked, no blimp. I remember my mom looking at me and saying, 
Where the hell did it go? Before realizing the swear, of course. I remember looking back at her, my little sci-fi mind already doing whirls and saying, I think there must be a secret base nearby. At the time, she had laughed, though a bit nervously, saying that it probably landed in a field nearby. Neither of us having something that couldn't wait an hour to get done, we decided to go exploring, try to find out what happened to it. We pulled out of the gas station and onto the back roads trying to find where it landed. We drove for an hour, trying every zigzag pattern we could. We went deeper into the country than we usually would, through some farms and forests, and all the way back to town in a massive loop. There was no blimp. It had simply vanished. We went home, filled with something between excitement and horror as we realized something actively weird and possibly supernatural had happened to us. We still didn't believe it, really. It had to have some explanation, right? We kept an eye on every news source that we could think of. My mom was always active in community groups on Facebook and the like, and we scanned there, but not a word was said about the blimp. We checked the website of the event park that we thought might be hosting it, but nothing was on their calendar. Nothing was said on the local news, in the paper, nothing was said at school or work. For all practical purposes, it seemed like no one else had seen it. Even probably ten years later, my mom makes jokes about this, saying that we're not crazy, they just want us to think that we are. We still have a half-joking hypothesis that there's some secret government base buried in the fields out back. Or that maybe we were visited by little green men. It's the only supernatural event that my mom actually believes in. Well, excluding religion if you like to count that as supernatural. And it's because we saw it with our own eyes. But the thing is, ten years later, I've become much more interested in the supernatural. I've always been someone who, while fundamentally and truly a skeptic, has had a weird connection with things that I really shouldn't. I had a degenerative bone disease as a child, and my parents have told me that, literally before I can remember, I was describing to them a tourniquet being wrapped around my leg. Another time, I warned my mom to watch out for the angel when she went with my uncle for a motorcycle ride. And though that was a weird thing to say with, like, zero context, they were almost in an accident because, as they were driving, a garden statue of an angel fell off of a pickup truck. I literally can no longer count the number of times I've seen places in my dreams before I ever see them in real life, but when I see them, they're identical down to the tiniest detail. My mom and I make a half-joke that her entire line is blessed with spiritual abilities in this way. My grandma and aunt always claimed that they saw spirits, which, to be honest, I always took with a grain of salt. And my mom has a very clear memory, right before my grandpa died, of seeing him in duplicate, a spirit version of him hovering over his body, like an astral projection. I have a lot of weird events that have happened to us, I will admit. Even if I intrinsically think that a lot of things are really less scary and less supernatural than they appear to be. I only discovered your channel this last winter, Raven, but it's been a part in a long chain of weird and slightly scary channels that I follow now. Like I said, I'm a skeptic. I look at things like this mostly for entertainment value, and I love the little adrenaline rush that these stories give me, but... While I keep hearing your glitch in the Matrix stories, I'm starting to think that this may be what happened to us. For some reason, the Matrix glitched in a blimp asset that matched pace with our car, could only be seen by us, and then glitched it back out. Maybe the blimp clipped between realities for a minute, or out of time. Maybe it slipped through a crack for just long enough for us to see it before returning to its rightful place. Or, maybe our initial guess was right, 
and either the government's doing some stuff that we really shouldn't have poked our noses as far into as we did, in hindsight, or it really was little green men paying us a visit in an oddly familiar craft. I don't know for sure. The only thing that I'm absolutely certain of is that that day, ten years ago, we saw a blimp that simply blinked out of existence in the time it took us to drive past some trees. Thank you so much for taking the time to read this. I know it's long and kind of meandering, occupational hazards of an English major, I guess, but I hope this is something that you and your audience can enjoy. When I was younger, I used to be a major proponent of taking road trips, and I used to love getting out on the open road. As strange as it is, I love the smell of hot asphalt. That rubbery, burning smell, something about it makes me want to drive a thousand miles to a location that I've never been to. Maybe it's something about the freedom of the highways, but... I've taken countless trips over the years to places that most people have never heard of, and I recommend everyone take a cross-country trip at least once in their life. That said, there is one trip, one of those cross-country trips, that actually haunts me. I think it was some kind of glitch in the Matrix, but I really don't know. I'm submitting this as a glitch story, because I have zero explanation otherwise. This was in the early 90s, I was in my early 20s, and I was on a solo road trip from east to west here in the States. I'd pack my car with all my essentials, say my goodbyes to people that mattered, and I would set off on adventure, stopping and making calls at payphones along the way. The first couple days of the trip were uneventful, I was just going down the highway with my music, some truck stop food, and the joy of freedom. On the third day, though, is when things took a bit of a strange turn. I was driving down a two-lane highway, a bit of a desolate stretch of road in the middle of nowhere. The sun was in the middle of the sky, making the shadows stretch across the landscapes, and making the air feel a bit heavier. I had been on a pretty empty stretch of road, and I hadn't seen another car or sign of life for a while. And that's when I saw what looked like a person standing on the side of the road. He was tall, thin, and had long hair flowing in the wind. He almost looked like a stereotypical hippie. He wasn't wearing vivid colors or anything like that. He just looked a bit lanky had big round glasses and long dark hair that was tied back. He had his thumb out like he was trying to hitchhike. I slowed down thinking that I could stop for him, but something about the whole situation gave me a weird vibe. Something told me to keep driving and that he would be fine, and that I should not stop. So, I kept going. As I drove on, I glanced in the rearview mirror and saw him continuing his travels on foot. He didn't seem upset that I didn't stop, so I wasn't going to feel bad about it. After about an hour, though, I was confused to see another hitchhiker. Not just another hitchhiker, but the same hitchhiker. It was the same guy standing there with the same bag and the same outstretched thumb. He had the same long hair that was tied back, and same round glasses, same overall look. I couldn't believe my eyes. It had to be a coincidence. There was no way that the guy an hour back had gotten ahead of me. I hadn't stopped or slowed down, and I was going something like 70 miles per hour at this point. For him to have gotten ahead of me, he would have had to have been walking faster than 70 miles per hour or teleported. Obviously, this didn't help my creepy feelings about him, but I ignored it, thinking that I was just going crazy. Until I saw him again, about another hour later. 
I know that sounds crazy, trust me, but I saw another man with the same tied back hair, the same brown shawl, the same lanky structure, and same outstretched thumb. At this point, I was freaking out, thinking that I was either losing it, or that I was at the butt end of the most well thought out prank in the world. Was this seriously a bunch of similar looking guys dispersed along the highway at hour intervals? Just standing there to mess with people and making them think that they're seeing things? At this point, I decided that I needed to go ahead and get off the highway, and stop to get something to eat. Maybe I was just hungry, and my brain was doing something stupid. I went for about 20 more minutes down the highway, making sure that there was no way that this man could catch up to me if I stopped. I pulled off, went to a Sonic's, and got a burger for dinner. I sat there, ate my food, and then decided to get back out onto the road. I pulled out of the parking lot, back onto the road that led to the highway, and at the next corner, who else would I see but that same man? This time he was at an intersection, not on the side of the highway, and he was just standing there with his bony thumb outstretched. This time I stopped. Seeing this guy four times, there had to be some level of fate between the two of us, right? There had to be something that was happening that I could not understand, and we were supposed to meet. My curiosity had taken over my fears, so... I just said that I would bite the bullet and confront him. I pulled up beside him, rolled the window down, and asked him if he was okay, or if he needed a ride. He nodded at me, and walked over to my car, and put his hands on the open window looking in. The whole time he walked up and looked around, he had the goofiest smile on his face, like he was the happiest he had ever been. After a couple seconds of this, I guess you could call it analysis, he looked at me and said, What's your name, bruh? I told him that my name was Gabriel, but that he could call me Gabe, if he wanted, and he just kept his smile and nodded slowly. After a few more seconds of terribly awkward silence, he looked back at me and said, You know what, brother? I appreciate it, but... I think I'll take the next one. His voice turned a bit cold, and he pushed himself away from my car, telling me to have safe travels. I stared at him for a moment, but then told him to have a good day, and started driving off. It was an incredibly awkward moment, and a conversation that I will remember for the rest of my life. The rest of the trip passed without incident, and I didn't see that man again. It was almost as if I needed to talk to him, like our simulation was telling me that, in order for me to continue, I needed to meet this random dude that I had seen hitchhiking in four different locations. And when I finally met him, he stopped spawning in, and I was allowed to move forward. It was a bit terrifying, not going to lie, but nothing really happened outside of that weird conversation. I don't know if he was some kind of ghost or glitch that I had to address, or if it was all in my head and it was just four guys that looked identical. Like I mentioned, I guess it could have been a prank, but if so, that was the most epically coordinated prank to have ever happened, and there was no payoff for literally any of them. No matter what it was, it was weird. And hopefully you and your listeners enjoy it. Okay, so admittedly, I was not, prior to this incident, a big believer in glitches. Heck, if I'm being honest... I sort of pride myself in my own skepticism. I don't and won't even subscribe to religions, which I find incredibly far-fetched. I mean, not to steal some wisdom from a man far smarter than I, but 
I just believe that not every religion could possibly be true, but it's certainly possible for them all to be false. But I digress. That aside, I am not and was not under the influence of anything mind-altering. With that, on with the events of this past evening. So, I went out to do some shopping, and while in the store, my girlfriend asked me to bring back ibuprofen. I respond by telling her that I had found a single bottle recently, and it was high in the cabinets, so if she wanted to wait for me to get back home to grab it instead of her inconveniencing herself, I would be back soon. And so, with the shopping done, I come home, yell to her that I'm back, put away the groceries, and proceed to tell her about my crippling stomach pains. It was a real bad tummy day, which is somewhat routine for me. After I was through complaining, I grab a soda and go over the food that I just bought. She becomes excited for a smoothie that I got her, and I say to hang tight, and I'll go grab it from the fridge. And here is where it gets bizarre. I return with the smoothie and recall that she also needed that ibuprofen, so I go to the cabinet. I reach up top to grab the only bottle of ibuprofen that I know of, and turn to hand it to her. She looks sort of confused and says, You just gave me the ibuprofen, and she holds up the bottle. At which point, I am completely baffled, and I explain to her calmly that not only did I not do that, I definitely only knew where one bottle was. Period. She and I go over the whole chain of events, and the point in time she claims I gave her the bottle was between complaining about my stomach and getting a soda, as though I'd left the room and come back in with the ibuprofen. But the only bottle I knew of was in the cabinet in the same room as her. As in, I could not possibly have left the room and come back with it, because to my knowledge there was none outside of that one bottle. I am extremely aware of only one bottle as she needs it routinely, and we thought we had none about a week ago, after which I discover the one rogue bottle cleaning, and I placed it in the cabinet knowing full well she would need it sooner or later, and I would have one on hand. I actually almost gave it to someone else who was over complaining of a headache, but checked, and verified that I only had the one bottle, and said, I have only one bottle and my girlfriend's gonna need it then proceeded to give them the option of any of the other analgesics that I had. So, you see, there's not a snowball's chance in hell that I mistakenly had two bottles to my knowledge. But moreover, I have, as everyone does, knowledge of what it's like to just have a brain fart and not realize something I did on autopilot. This was not that. To conclude... I don't have a history of any cognitive malfunctions, no hiccups or holes in my memory, and I don't do anything risky to jeopardize my gray matter. I firmly believe the brain to be a terrible thing to waste. And also, before anyone asks, the ibuprofen in the cabinet and the bottle she had matched perfectly, even though it was from CVS, which I had not gone to in a long time. I still checked the sales receipts from the store to make sure that I didn't seriously have a gap in recollection of my picking it up while out. This is truly a case for which I am totally in disbelief, and honestly, if I was anyone else reading this, I would just say, yeah, either dude forgot he had a second bottle in the cabinet or she was messing with him. Believe me when I say, folks, I wish that... I could just chalk this up to such a simple explanation. The OP made a few edits that we'll go over here. Edit 1. I want to thank everyone who has replied here. I didn't imagine I'd find myself engaged in some very provoking lines of thinking, as a result of so many interesting notions having been introduced. I want to address some of the developments because there's a lot of neat stuff being bounced back and forth in the comments. Edit 2, the bottles. For those who wondered how exactly the bottles were entirely identical, I went back to verify the UPC, 
and every other random code or numeral match. Same size, pill count, dates, everything. Edit 3. No psychoactive substances have been taken by either of us before this event. Or, for that matter, even as this thread has developed. We simply don't get all too inebriated all too often. My own health and stomach issues necessitate meds, but nothing that causes confusion. I take a diuretic and laxative for fluid retention and a slow tummy. And even though I take those routinely, this was at the end of a long day, well beyond how long those meds would have impacted me. And I never drink. My job demands that I'm very on point with no room for hangovers or anything that could cloud my judgment. Beyond this, I take specific amino acids for chronic pain and drink Indo-Tea, neither of which are psychoactive or inebriate me, and hadn't been taken in the time frame of this event. Edit 4. We have experienced other weirdness surrounding different incidents, but I could have logically reasoned out how human error and confusion could have played a role. However unlikely in some of those, and thus, that is what I chose to believe when and where I could. This instance doesn't provide me the luxury making it a cut above on my creepy scale. Now, with enough time, incidents, and this one specifically, I am quicker to say, I just don't know. Some things can't be explained. As I'm too dumb and typically human, no sixth sense here or specialized knowledge, to say that I've insight into how and why of everything. In truth, even with what most would call a large volume of bizarre in my life, I've tried to remain a skeptical human to present date, and don't dwell too much on any of that bizarro stuff. Again, this incident was different, and somewhat undeniable. Nine years ago, I had an experience that I still can't fully explain. Maybe it was my brain playing tricks on me, but it was unusual, as nothing similar has happened to me either before nor since. When I was a teenager, my friend, let's call her Sarah, and I went to a local festival that our town hosts annually. This event is essentially a community gathering with street shops, live music, and the like. It's actually quite boring. However, one special feature is the opening of several historic buildings that are typically closed all year, except for this day. Now, this part is a bit cringy, but we were weird teens after all. We thought it would be fun to enter the largest of these buildings and search for ghosts or anything paranormal, since we were pretty into that stuff back then. We wandered around the building, which was an old cabin from the 1860s, but the presence of other people somewhat ruined the experience. We decided to wait until everyone else had left, before going up to the second floor to start recording. The upper floor of the cabin isn't very big. Once you climb the stairs, you face a small child's bedroom. There's also a short hallway to the left that leads to the master bedroom with another small closet area inside. And that's all that there is up there. Anyway, we went into the child's bedroom first and started recording in there. We joked about the mirror being haunted, made fun of a straw hat that we found, and even joked about seeing a ghost in the window. However, nothing unusual actually happened. Once I got bored of that room, I decided to check out the master bedroom, but Sarah wasn't quite done looking yet, so she stayed. When I was in the master bedroom, I filmed around for a bit and then filmed in the small closet, but again saw nothing. As I turned out of the closet, though, I was surprised by a girl that I hadn't seen before. I didn't even hear her approach me. She asked me what I was doing, and being the introvert that I am, I was embarrassed to be recording a closet. 
so I stopped recording and quietly said nothing and went outside to find Sarah. When I got outside, however, Sarah wasn't there. But a minute later, she came out and asked, Why did you just leave me in there? When I explained that I thought she had left me, and that I had encountered a random girl, Sarah said, That was me, and you just ignored me. That's when things became really strange. The girl that I saw did not resemble Sarah at all. Sarah is short, blonde hair with blue eyes, and was wearing a white shirt with shorts that day. The girl that I saw was much taller, had dark brown hair and eyes, a longer face, and was wearing a dark blue shirt. I didn't look to see what type of pants she was wearing, but her voice was deeper than Sarah's as well. It was like talking to an entirely different person. After that, I really didn't believe that it was Sarah that I saw, so I decided to look at the recording, but of course it cut off while I was filming in the closet, just before the girl approached me. I distinctly remember stopping the recording after seeing the girl since I was feeling embarrassed about filming in a closet, so that really confused me. It was like something you would see in a horror movie, where you think you have proof, only for it to miraculously disappear. Unfortunately, I don't have that video anymore since this was almost a decade ago. Even if I did, it would only show me filming that room before it abruptly ended in the closet. I'm sure that anyone reading this might be skeptical, as I would be, but it's definitely one of the most unusual experiences that I've ever had. As I said, it could have been my brain playing tricks on me, but you would think experiences like this would happen to me more often if that were the case. Some of you may also think that I was just imagining it, since I was specifically looking for ghosts. But we'd done this countless times before with nothing like this ever happening. I also don't think that I'd imagine a ghost that looked so lifelike. This was like encountering any other person on the street. It didn't seem paranormal at all. All I know is that this is an experience that I will never forget. VOP then added what they labeled a rather long update. After replying to comments, I was reminded of other experiences that happened after this that are related, so I'll tell them below. There are two things that I would like to point out, however. I was 16 at the time, and she was 15, so we were young, but not little kids or anything like that. I'd like to also point out that Sarah and I were mentally in sync, if that makes sense. I mean, we thought almost exactly the same, to the point where it was creepy. We even used to make fun of it. She's a very positive person, and I'm a negative person, so we would make fun of that old opposites attract proverb. I mean, we were so in sync that we would have at least 12 jinx moments where we would say exactly the same thing at the same time every time that we saw each other. And these weren't common expressions. These were just random sentences and phrases every time. We actually wondered if we knew each other in past lives, and that's why we had that connection. I'm not sure if past lives are real, but if they are, I have no doubt that we'd have met. We also had this weird ability where we seemed to be able to sense when one of us was about to call or text. We'd get this feeling, and within a minute, it would happen. It was such a strong connection that our other friends even noticed it and pointed it out to us several times, so we know that it wasn't just us. That all sounds completely made up, but it's not. I've never had that connection with anybody else in my life, and I'm afraid that we lost it after she moved and we lost contact, but I cherish those memories. It was such an unreal experience and one that I hope everyone can have at some point in their life, but I don't think that many do. Anyway, the reason I decided to bore you with that long explanation is because when I saw this strange girl in the cabin that was 
apparently Sarah, it really did seem like a completely different person. I didn't have that special connection with this girl, and it was like talking to a complete stranger. I think that's one of the reasons why I remember the experience so well. Alright, now I'll get on to two other experiences that I was reminded of that I think are related to this one. The first happened the afternoon after we visited that cabin. During our time in the cabin, we took this old shoe buckle that we found. We weren't the best of people. It was about one and a half or two inches long, and that afternoon we were jumping on her trampoline with it, trying not to get hit by it because why not? I distinctly remember that it fell off five times. Up until the fifth time it fell off, we had no problem seeing where it landed and retrieving it within a few seconds. But on the fifth time, we couldn't find it. We both saw exactly where it fell off, and it was right between the springs, so it couldn't have gone far. We both searched for it for about an hour, both under and within a 50-foot radius of the trampoline, but we just could not find it. I even went back a little later with my metal detector, and it was nowhere to be found. To this day, we've never found it. And we both joked at the time that it probably went to another dimension. The second experience is very similar to that one. We also took this old button from the cabin at the same time that we took the buckle. Again, we weren't the best people. After we spent about an hour looking for the vanishing buckle, we decided to do the same thing with the button. And I'm not kidding when I say that it also disappeared the first time that it fell off. After that, we decided to just go inside because it was creepy that two things from the cabin disappeared in the same way. The difference here is that we actually found the button about a week later in the clothes basket in her closet and she swears to me that she did not go looking for it later. There's always the possibility that she did look for it and planted it there, but it didn't seem like she was lying. And we had an excellent ability to tell when the other was lying because of that special connection that we had. I do still have that button as well. Alright, that's the end for now. Upon reading it all, it does seem like a far-fetched tale, but... This really was just one long, unusual series of events. I've never had anything quite like it happened before or since. I'm sure there could be a logical explanation for everything that's happened, or maybe it really was just a series of unlikely coincidences. I'll never know for sure, so you can make of it what you will. I do know for sure that she and I had a connection unlike anything that I've ever experienced. So, I at least know that that much is true. And maybe that connection is why these weird things happened to us. This is not the first and I'm sure it won't be the last glitch in the Matrix I've experienced. But it is the most recent, and by far the most tripped out I've had so far. I've become a bit of a hermit over the last few years. That being said, a couple of weeks ago I was a bit restless, and actually craving company, so I decided to go out for a drink or two in a game of pool. I go to the bar, order a beer and some mozzarella sticks, and I looked around. The place was kind of dead, even for 9pm on a Tuesday. I put a selection of songs on the jukebox and waited to see if anyone seemed to be interested in a game. About four songs in, 15 minutes or so, this cute girl comes over. She must have just got there because I'm sure I would have noticed her before. She mentioned how she really loved Pucifer, the song Faraday River by them happened to be playing. We started talking and shot a couple of games of pool. I had two more beers and bought her a mixed drink Skittles. We talked for a bit longer and then the bartender did last call. 
it wasn't even midnight yet, but there were only five customers total in the bar. So I settled up my tab, exchanged phone numbers with her, and said I hoped to see her again. It's about two and a half miles from the bar home, and I don't drink and drive, so I started my walk in a great mood. I'd gotten about half a mile when a car pulls up beside me. It was Heather, the girl I'd met at the bar. She asked if I would like a ride home, or maybe if I wasn't tired, I would like to continue our fun evening. I said that I really should get home, but I must admit that there was an energy that almost seemed magnetic, and said sure that I would love to continue the evening. So, we stopped by the store, grabbed a bottle of wine and some smokes and snacks, and we went to a lake about five miles from the place, and only about a mile from where she was staying. We threw our blanket on the ground and enjoyed a nice midnight picnic, and, well, yes, things got a bit romantic. Then she said something that I found very, very odd. I swear that I heard her say, that was even better than I remember. She just laughed it off, and we dozed off there next to the lake, cuddling, and woke up to the pre-dawn. I asked her again what she meant when she said better than she remembered. She said it had been about 15 years, but we had met before in Portland. And like this night, we had an amazing time. I said, wait a minute, I definitely would have remembered sharing an evening like this with her. She swore to me that it was true, and how would she even know that I was in Portland 15 years ago, or the bar I used to go to where we met? Now, I told her nothing of living in Portland. I only lived there just barely over a year, and after moving to a different state, and three different cities in the 15 years since having moved out to this small logging town in the middle of nowhere. But she said that she could show me proof. So we went to the cabin that she was staying in, and she dug through a box of pictures and pulled out a couple of photos of us, one of me lying on my stomach with my shirt off. I happened to have a very large tattoo on my back, along with quite a few on my arms. There was no mistaking that it was me in those photos with her, except the fact that 15 years ago, I didn't have half of those tattoos. And again, I believe that last night was the first time we had ever met. She kind of laughed it off nervously and changed the subject and asked if I was hungry. We ate breakfast, and she dropped me off at my place. I was a bit tripped out, so it took me a few days before I tried calling her. I really couldn't get her out of my mind. I even stopped by her place, but it was obvious that no one was living there now. I don't know what the heck happened, but I get the feeling that maybe we're both riding the time slip waves and catch each other on chance occasions, and what happened 15 years ago for her might still be in my future. Or maybe I belong in a mental institution. All I know is that she has definitely made it impossible for me to forget her, even if she ends up being nothing but a figment of my imagination. All I know is that from my experience, the truth is definitely weirder than fiction. I have a weird glitchy thing that happened to me when I was around 9, which would have been the late 90s. At the time, my mom had an older Chevy Astro van that we were looking to get rid of. I only have an older brother, and there are about 8 years between us, so at the time he would have been around 17 and was already saving for his own car. Times were a bit rough around then, and my parents had decided they were going to be a one-car family, since having the van wasn't really necessary anymore. Of course, I was a bit sad about that, because the van was a cornerstone of my childhood. It was a slate gray beast that had seen better days for sure, but it also punctuated literally every trip that I'd been a part of from the day I was born. 
So, yeah. It was sad, but I get it. Anyways, one day my mom told me that I needed to change out of my pajamas and put on some real clothes because someone was coming over to look at the van and she didn't want me running around in my Superman pants. I found it a bit odd. Normally, I would just stay inside while the adults did their adult things. But, for some reason, she was adamant that I needed to be dressed so that I could be outside with her and this stranger. Obviously, I did what I was told, and sure enough, she expected me to be outside when the man came to look at the van. The man that showed up was pretty nondescript. He was a bit taller than my dad, wearing a baseball cap and sunglasses. He seemed friendly enough, chatting with my mom about the van, asking about the mileage, any issues that it had, just the typical car buying stuff, really. After a bit of conversation and back and forth, I remember the man looked over to me and said, What do you think, champ? Should I buy the van? I remember thinking it was neat that he asked me, like I was making the decisions for him. And I told him that it was a really good van, and I thought that he would like it if he bought it. He laughed and said okay, telling my mom that he would take it. I remember that, after that, I was bored out of my mind, because they had to do the whole process for selling the car. I was sitting there playing with pebbles in the driveway while they chatted more and filled out the bill of sale, and the title and all that stuff. Then... I watched as the man handed my mom the cash, she handed him the keys, and he drove off. My mom seemed pleased, he seemed happy, and the day went on as normal after that. The next morning I woke up and went downstairs for breakfast, only to glance out the window and see the van sitting right there in the side driveway. I was a bit confused and surprised to see it sitting in the driveway again, but... I asked my mom if the guy had brought it back for some reason. When I asked this, she looked up from her coffee and sort of just stared at me like I was speaking gibberish. She said that no one had come to look at the van yet, and that she'd only gotten a call from one lady that was going to come out on Saturday to check it out. I mentioned the guy in the ball cap that had come over to buy it yesterday, described him, mentioned that he gave her cash and everything. She just looked at me like I had two heads. I tried to explain it to her the best that I could. I even mentioned the title and the bill of sale that she had written up so that he could drive it away. Things that no nine-year-old should know about randomly. My mom was insistent that it hadn't happened and asked me if I was feeling okay. I was genuinely taken aback. I couldn't understand how I could have such a vivid memory of an event that, apparently, never took place. Had I dreamed the whole thing? I really don't think so. It was definitely a real event that happened. I was a kid, sure, but I could tell the difference between dreaming and reality. It was a while before I could push the whole thing out of my head, even at that age. I knew something weird had happened. The van did eventually sell, but not to the guy that I remember buying it. Looking back, it's one of those events that really does bother me. I have no explanation for it, because nothing logical makes sense. My mom wouldn't benefit from lying to me about it, and I'm pretty sure there wasn't some shady deal that they made or something. It was a car sale. However, for whatever reason... That sale just never happened, and someone else got the van. No idea how or why, but that is how it happened. This happened a while back, sometime during the summer of 2021. I always thought this event was pretty weird, but only skimming through this subreddit a bit made me realize how much of a glitch it was. So, at the time of this event, I was living in Vienna in a student's dormitory. It was getting time for me to renew my prescription for my eyeglasses, so I looked around for a place to do that. Turns out, 
there's one optical store just around the corner from me. I made an appointment and went in for an eye exam. I showed up and said hello. The guy at the front desk seemed very confused that I would be there, even though we had talked on the phone about me coming. And that was only the day before. Hm, whatever, I thought. The actual exam took place in a back room, and the doctor examining me was this short, stocky gentleman with a distinct Farsi accent. I know because I have a lot of Persian friends since childhood. I pick up on that sound intuitively at this point. Everything goes well. I get my prescription, or I don't. Only at the very end do I realize that doctor never gave me the paper slip with my numbers on them. I tried noting them down from memory since he clearly showed me everything on his computer monitor, but I wanted to make sure. So, I walked into the same place the next morning to ask for a copy. I walk in, and this time it's a much older, taller guy at the front desk who answers me. I give him my name and tell him what happened, and he types away at his computer for maybe a solid minute. I thought, well, that's a bit long considering I didn't ask him to do anything special, but whatever. Then he calls someone else from the back. They whisper to each other. They stare at the monitor for another minute. I almost felt like they were suspecting me of, well, something, by the way they were acting about it all. Uh, well, sir, it seems like you haven't been here before. Excuse me? You have not been a customer of ours according to our database. Well, obviously there's a mistake. Just let me talk to the doctor who examined me yesterday. He will know what I need. I was very confused at this point, but oh well. Maybe the new old guy at the front desk had simply messed up. There's no way the doctor wouldn't recognize me. I was even wearing the same color shirt as the day before. The old guy by the entrance was so kind and strangely official in asking all the store's ODs to come and line up for me for a second. There weren't that many, of course. It was a small store, maybe five people, and my guy, the short, bronze-skinned guy with the Farsi accent, was so obviously not among them. It was all tall, younger-looking, white, Austrian doctors with Viennese accents. I was really confused. I asked the guy from the front desk what was going on, if the doctor I had just seen had just spontaneously decided to take a day off. He typed away for a moment, and then just bluntly told me, no. I have no idea if that was no he didn't, or no he doesn't exist. I was feeling totally weirded out by this interaction. So I just jumped ahead and asked if I could resolve this confusion by just redoing my eye exam here. With a very fake smile, he leaned over to me and said, My apologies, but at the moment, we're fully booked, and we can't take on new appointments for such things. I suggest you try one of our other locations. Now, I know that this was not true, because the younger guy that I had been talking on the phone with told me and showed me via their website that appointments for eye exams there are only a courtesy thing. They have a company policy that they're always free, and there's like 50 time slots available for each day, so they basically never fill up. On the day that I came, I was free to choose any time from, I think, 10.15 in the morning to 3.30 in the afternoon, or something like that so that they would be suddenly fully booked is a bit silly. I felt like telling that to this guy, but I wasn't in the mood for an argument. I could tell that they were about to shoo me out for reasons that I couldn't grasp, so I just left. I still think about this from time to time, and it keeps feeling weirder every time. I know it's not nearly as out there as some of the other experiences that others have shared here, but it's mine, and I thought it was still pretty interesting. I 
I saw a bunch of people mentioning their experiences with glitches in the Matrix, and I don't know if that's what I experienced, but it seems to be on brand with what I've read here. It started a few days ago. I was sitting on my couch watching TV when I heard a dog barking outside. I glanced over at my living room window and saw a husky running past, followed by a skinny kid. I'm guessing that was the owner, running behind him, the leash dragging on the ground. I looked back at the TV to continue watching my show, but then I heard it again. I expected to see the same scene, but reversed, with the dog running back the way it came, but it was the same as before, from left to right. It had only been a few seconds since I glanced back at the TV. Hmm, they must have been running in circles, I thought. I glanced back at the TV confused, and it happened again. The same dog barking, running from left to right, the same kid running after him. It was like I was in some kind of time loop, but watching it from the outside looking in. This went on for about five, ten minutes, confused as hell. I tried to ignore it, and then I noticed that my TV was repeating the same short scene every few seconds or so, like I had just kept hitting the rewind button on the remote. It was almost 3.40 by this point, which was also odd, once I started thinking about it. I had been watching the show for about half an hour, the show started at 3.15, but the clock said it was 3.33. I watched the clock for another minute or two, and it never moved. I swear I stared at it for ten minutes. The dog was still barking outside. Nothing. It never switched over to 3.34. At this point, I'm freaked out. I check my phone. Sure enough, 3.33. All of the clocks visible to me read 3.33, no matter what time it actually was. Which, at that moment, I had no idea what time it really was. I decided to call my girlfriend while she was at work to see if she was experiencing the same thing. But when she picked up after only one ring, she kept repeating the same hey in the same tone over and over again. Not knowing what to do, I freaked out and hung up. I threw my phone across the room and it hit the wall hard. After a few seconds, the show finally pressed on, after seeing that same car crash 40,000 times. Or at least that's what it felt like. And after a few more seconds, there was no barking. I glanced out the window and it was finally starting to get dark. I got up and walked over to the other side of the room to get my phone. Luckily, it wasn't cracked. I called my girlfriend again, and she answered after a few rings. She was back to normal as well. I asked if she felt off at all, and she said that she didn't know what I was referring to. I just said that I loved her and then hung up. That, like I said, was a few days ago. And for those few days, everything was back to normal. Or at least I thought it was. I don't know what happened, but when I woke up this morning, I felt like I'd been in bed for days. I was sore, and my girlfriend, even though it was her day off, turned out to be at work. She said that I knew it was Thursday and that she always works the mornings on Thursdays. I fell asleep on Monday night. I decided to check the indoor ring camera that I have set up in the bedroom, just in case someone tries to rob the place. Or maybe I had this desire to catch an occasional ghost on camera. I don't know. But as I'm skimming through the footage, I notice that at exactly 3.33 a.m., the camera glitches. And after a few seconds, it does it again, playing the same five seconds on loop. The player still let me scrub through as if time was passing, and I held down the forward button and I watched as the loop just went on for what seemed like days. Did I really sleep for three whole days? What the hell is happening? I spent that day paranoid, hoping that when 3.33pm rolled around that I wasn't stuck on some endless loop. But it came and went. I dreaded that night as well, so 
I actually stayed up until 3.33 in the morning to see if it would happen again, but time just went on like it always had. Fast forward to right now as I'm writing this, and there hasn't been as much as a hiccup. I have no clue what could have happened, but everything from this sub makes me think that I had some kind of weird glitch in the Matrix experience. This all started about two weeks ago. Well, at least, that's when I noticed it. I actually have no idea how long it's actually been going on. It could be years, or could be my entire life. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I noticed something off about my surroundings a couple weeks back. It was really slight, but I caught it just before it fixed itself. The sun was setting soon, and the light was hitting the stuff in my house from the view of the big living room bay window. As the shadows were cast across the ground, I noticed one of them, particularly my house plant, was off by just an inch or so. And I don't mean to the left or right, I mean from the starting point of the base of the plant pot. There was a gap between where the shadow started and the bottom of the plant pot itself. In between the gap was the room's normal glow from the house lamp. But like a figure out of the corner of my eye, as soon as I saw it, it was gone. But it was just long enough to throw me off. It wasn't enough to stop me in my tracks and start investigating, not yet, anyway. So I continued my work on my laptop and went about the rest of the night. I woke up the next morning, got up, and went to go take a shower. We have two bathrooms, each with one window that faces the door and is inside the shadow. It's blurred at the bottom so no one can peek in, but it still has enough at the top for proper light to come through. As I finish my shadow and pull the curtain back to step out, I see my shadow being cast on the ground, and I thought about the previous night. It caused me to look closely again at the shadow. I noticed that my shadow was slightly askew, a little too far to the right. I lifted my hand up to test it, and sure enough, the shadow didn't seem to line up. In fact, it was slightly above where it should be, along with being too far to the right. But again, just as I blinked and noticed it properly, it was fixed. This time I was freaking out. I got to properly test my confusion and was met with even more confusing results. After that, I noticed it everywhere. Cars, buses, food, other people. Not everything, but at least one thing with a shadow in my view every so often would be off. The shower was the only time that I got to interact with the phenomena. After that, it was just when I glanced and focused on it quickly, and then it would fix itself right then and there. It felt like a video game, how sometimes they'll only render the proper details of the world around you when it's looking to save resources. It never derailed my life, it was just shadows, whatever it was. I could deal with it until I brought it up to my friend Dave, who said he noticed the exact same thing around lately. It's like whatever the world runs off of is running out of it, and fast. Me and Dave decided to search the internet for any ideas as to what could be going on. The only thing that kept popping up is simulation theory. The theory is basically this. Some people seem to think that instead of there being a god or lack thereof, that we are actually all in a simulation, based on some computer somewhere, like the movie The Matrix. We spent hours just looking into it. The more we read, the more we thought that it was true. That was until I woke up the next morning, and not a single shadow was out of place. Then, throughout the day nothing. 
everything was so normal that it freaked me out more than the messed up shadows. It was so jarring to see it all return to the way that it was. It was like something noticed that I figured out something was off, and then quickly corrected it. When I asked Dave at lunch that day if it fixed for him, he seemed to have no clue as to what I was talking about. Weeks have gone by, and I still find myself looking around for one messed up shadow. To this day, nothing. It's worse than knowing something was wrong, because now it's all back to normal, and I have no proof of anything being out of the ordinary. It drives me crazy, to be honest. I'm posting this here to see if anyone else has experienced off-shadows of their everyday wares and experiences or even just anything similar that might help me think that I'm not going crazy. I have a peculiar experience that I had when I was way younger, and I'm pretty sure that it was a glitch in the Matrix, but I was really young, and this was way before glitches were a thing that people discussed. Yes, I was a young kid, about nine years old. But this is a core memory for me because of how weird it was. It was a Friday afternoon in the summer, and I was home with my older sister watching me. My parents both at work. My sister was, quote, watching me, but she wasn't exactly the best babysitter, and she would just stay in her room while I did whatever I wanted. So, being nine, I decided that lunch that day was going to be a massive bowl of chocolate ice cream with sprinkles, while sitting out on the back porch. I was living the dream. This was everything for me at that moment. Chocolate ice cream, chocolate syrup, sprinkles. I've never been happier since, honestly. Then, my happiness was cut short by my own lack of dexterity. I was lifting a shovel's worth of ice cream to my mouth when I slipped up and dumped a huge amount of chocolate ice cream straight onto my t-shirt. And, of course, this would happen on the day where I'm wearing a light blue t-shirt, one of my favorite shirts. It wasn't just a little bit that hit the shirt. It was a huge, half-melted glob of chocolate, and it ran all the way down the shirt. So, in other words, I was pretty certain that it was ruined. Panicking, I rushed inside. Tears started to well up in my eyes, and I knew that I was going to be in a ton of trouble. I changed out the shirt and I put the blue one on my bed trying to better look at the stain, thinking maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. But no, it was actually worse. I stared at this massive brown splotch with drip lines all the way to the bottom of the shirt. My favorite shirt at the time was completely ruined. When my mom got home later that day, I approached her with guilt written all over my face. I was sure that she was going to kill me, and I braced myself for the scolding of a lifetime. I told her sheepishly about the shirt, and about how I was eating ice cream, and how I had stained the shirt. She looked at me concerned and sighed, but then asked, How bad is it? I told her that it was pretty bad. She shook her head, but just asked me to bring her the shirt so that she could see what she could do. I walked to my room and angrily grabbed the shirt off of my bed not wanting to look at it, and then walked out of the room to hand it to her. I handed it to her, and I couldn't bring myself to look at her, but then it got weird. She said, Where's the stain, Josie? I looked up and said, On the front. It was a really big spot. My mom turned the shirt's front to face me, and sure enough, there was no stain on the shirt. 
I stared at the fabric, unable to really believe what I was seeing. The stain was completely gone. Not faded, not partially removed, just completely gone. As if it had never even happened. I grabbed the shirt from her, examining it closely, my mind swirling. I knew what I had seen. I knew the ice cream had spilled and covered the front of the shirt. But there was no way for me to deny the evidence in front of me. My mom said that I probably just thought that I had dropped some on the shirt, but didn't. But I know for a fact that I did. I didn't do anything to clean the shirt, because back then it didn't occur to me to wet the shirt or anything. So I just dropped it on my bed. Honestly, the chocolate should have set into the fabric. I checked my room to make sure that I hadn't grabbed the wrong shirt, but no. It was the only one on my bed. Obviously, I got over it, but it was still really bizarre to me. Sometimes I'll just think back to that day and try to think of some rational explanation, but I've got nothing. It was an impossible thing to happen. Something that showed me that there are cracks in our reality. Because that shirt should have been ruined. But yet, there wasn't even the slightest amount of chocolate ice cream on any of the fabric. I have always loved the quiet solitude that comes with fishing. I love being out on the water and away from the craziness of everyday life. It's always been my perfect idea of relaxation. A sort of therapy, you could say. I have a bit of a creepy story that actually took place not that long ago, in early June. It was early morning and I'd set out on my boat expecting nothing but a nice and calming day and hoping for a decent catch. I'm catch and release, so I wasn't taking anything home, but I was still hoping for a good time. The water was very calm that day. The sun was shining down hard and the sky was cloudless. It was a couple hours into my day, the only sounds around being the gentle lapping of the water and the birds going a bit crazy over whatever it is birds go crazy over. As I was sitting there, I saw something glinting on the water, something that looked a bit out of place. It caught my attention, and as I focused on it, I noticed it was a glass bottle just bobbing up and down in the water. My curiosity peaked, and I was also a little annoyed at the same time. I hate people that litter on the water. I reeled my line in and maneuvered my boat a bit closer before grabbing my net to pull the bottle out of the lake. When I pulled it from the water, I could see that it was pretty old and pretty gross, but the lid was fully sealed and it wasn't full of water or anything. I wiped it down and noticed what looked like a rolled up piece of paper inside of the bottle. I opened the bottle and pulled the paper out, and that's when things got a bit strange. The paper wasn't dated or anything, and it didn't look like it was that old, but it's what was written on it that confused me. The message was written by a man named Jonathan, same name as me. It started by saying, I'm writing this on an early morning in June. The water is calm and there's barely a cloud in the sky, which was identical to how things were going on on that specific morning. The letter also mentioned that Jonathan was struggling with some things in life, which is why he went out fishing on that particular morning. It stated that his father had passed away recently, and that he was going through a painful divorce. This was incredibly chilling to me. My father had passed away about three months prior, and my wife and I had recently agreed to split up. I was struggling with things which is why I set up this weekend fishing trip. There were a few more details in the letter that matched mine. Not major details, but small things about how he was feeling, what he was planning on doing, and so forth. 
The letter ended with a quick note that said, I'm going to have to cut my fishing trip short, though. The clouds are starting to build up, and I'm thinking that it's going to be a pretty crazy storm. I paused, and I looked up, and, much to my surprise, the sky was actually starting to get a bit cloudy off to the horizon. At this point, I kind of thought about what I should do. Was this some kind of prophetic letter? Or was it just completely coincidental and I was crazy? After thinking about it, I decided to go ahead and wrap up my trip. The letter was too close to my exact circumstances to just not be something, so I got my boat to the shore and got it hooked back up, and I got all of my gear put up in my truck. As soon as I got out of there and onto the main road, it started to downpour, like hard rain, and small bits of hail level storming. I laughed at the craziness. The storm actually went on for the rest of the day, and it was heavy enough that there was a tornado watch that was put into place, because of the wind and the level of intensity that it hit our town with. Now, I'm not saying for sure that this was some sort of prophetic message from myself, from some other timeline or something, but it is crazy to me that I found a letter from a person with my name going through almost the same thing that I was going through that ended with the message that predicted exactly what had happened. If I hadn't listened to that letter, I would have been out on the water when it was coming down like that, and it would not have been pretty. But that's my story. I unfortunately do not have the letter anymore. It seemingly disappeared at some point soon after that day, while I was moving my stuff, but I like to think that it ended up back in the water to warn the next version of me that ends up out in that water on a June morning. And hopefully he listens. I've told this story to several people, and no one has really believed me. They just awkwardly shrugged and moved on. But maybe someone on here might appreciate this story. Anyway, a couple of years ago I had just graduated high school and didn't know what to do with my life yet, or which college to go to. Since my sister is a lot older than me, by the time I graduated she had already gotten married, had a baby, and moved into a new house. They had just put in a brand new kitchen, and then they went to visit her husband's parents, that live in another state. My sister asked me if I wanted to house-sit and feed their cat two times a day. I said yes, because I was still living with my parents and wanted some time to myself, without my parents constantly nagging at me about what I wanted to do with my life. They were right, of course, but I wanted some peace. So, I stayed at my sister's house. I played with the cat, fed the cat regularly, watched movies, used their PlayStation, and so on. I often had to stand in the kitchen and wait for the cat to finish her food. She was a very picky eater, and I had to make sure that she actually ate what I fed her. So, I was standing there every day looking around randomly, being a little bored. I vividly remember that the kitchen was in a really bright red color. My sister thought that it looked great, and her husband just let her pick the color without interfering, because my sister is the one that cooks anyways. I wasn't that interested in kitchens, but I definitely noticed the red color, and I thought a couple of times that it was too bright and eye-catching. They might actually get sick of it easily and have to pay a huge amount of money to change it. I also took pictures and videos of the house to show them to my girlfriend. We joked about getting married and buying a house like this too, even though we both felt way too young for that and didn't even have jobs yet. I also filmed the kitchen and said to my girlfriend jokingly that I wouldn't let her choose a color like this because it's not my cup of tea. It's too ugly. She agreed with me. She wouldn't let me choose a color like this either. Several weeks later, 
I got accepted into college and moved. So, I didn't stay at my sister's house at all. Approximately one year later, I was back at my parents' house for holidays, and my sister invited us all to dinner. I helped bringing out the food and returning used dishes and loading them into the dishwasher. While doing that, I noticed that they had a white kitchen now. I was confused, but I didn't say anything because there was a lot going on. A couple of hours later, I texted my sister because I remembered the new kitchen, and I thought it was funny that I was right all along. I texted her, saying, Why'd you change your kitchen so soon? I thought you would get sick of the red, but I didn't think you would change the kitchen to a white one that fast. She was really confused because she had no idea what I was talking about. We texted back and forth, and she explained that their kitchen had always been white, from day one when they had it installed in the new house. There has never been a red kitchen, not even in the planning phases. I thought that this was extremely weird, but I didn't want to give up. I suspected that she was pranking me. I looked up the pictures and videos on my phone. My heart sank when I saw it. The kitchen was white in every picture and video. I asked my girlfriend if she remembered me sending her the videos of my sister's house, and if yes, what color was the kitchen? And she said yes. She remembered watching the video and talking to me about the red kitchen. It couldn't have been a dream. I definitely stayed at my sister's house. My sister remembered me staying there and feeding the cat until they came back from their vacation. And my girlfriend clearly remembered watching the video with a red kitchen in it, but the color has changed in the video. So it can't be a prank by my sister. Or a false memory. My girlfriend and I couldn't have hallucinated another color at the same time. We had a long-distance relationship and only talked on the phone or texted. We never did any drugs at all and there was no alcohol involved either. And, lastly, it wouldn't make sense for me to invent a story like this if it didn't actually happen. If I had to fabricate something, I would make it a lot more creepy and interesting. Not this boring kitchen color change. I still have no explanation besides it being a glitch in the Matrix. You could argue that it could be a Mandela effect or a switch to a parallel reality too, but I believe that this is debatable. All these things might essentially stem from the same root. Maybe more random details changed in my life, but I just don't notice it. At the time, I didn't know that this was a glitch in the Matrix. I truly didn't know what it was. I'd seen the film, of course, but that's Hollywood, right? It's not real life. But, then again, what is real? Let me set the scene. It was the summer of 2000. I had started my first real job back in December the previous year, and after six months or so, I had progressed from general office admin duties to route planning and maintenance scheduling. Pretty mundane stuff, I know, but I was happy and comfortable and already had eyes on a promotion. I worked for a local county council transport service, primarily focusing on the elderly and the infirm. It was Friday lunchtime, and that typically meant depositing a large amount of money at the local bank. I was getting ready to leave when one of the drivers came by to drop off a spare set of keys. The guy was a friendly but subdued character, who for the purpose of anonymity we will call Bob. Bob had overheard me telling my manager that I would try and be back within 30 minutes or so. Hey, want some company? He said. My next pickup isn't till 2.30. Great, you can buy lunch too, I joked. I liked Bob. We got on. He had a troubled home life, and in all honesty, I felt kind of sorry for him. 
Sadly, I would later find out that he was involved with some questionable characters who had dealings with the occult and witchcraft, and that in and of itself is another story to tell. Back to the bank. And this is where a truly bizarre incident took place. Bob and I entered the bank at precisely 1.05 p.m. The huge digital clock above the cashier's desk glaring down at us. We joined the queue, chatting about music and football. An automated voice announced, Cashier number two available. Only, it wasn't. Stood directly in front of that cashier window was a tall and slender gentleman dressed in a formal pinstriped suit, briefcase, cane, and a hat in tow. His hair was white, like brilliant white, yet he looked no older than 30. He had these mesmerizing green eyes, but they were cold, and his movements were stiff, forced, almost robotic. Bob and I looked at each other, and I suddenly became aware that there was nobody else in the bank apart from us and him. I was sure, no, certain, that there had been several cashier windows full of customers not 30 seconds before. Yet, now, there were none. Bob began to speak when Mr. White, let's call him, banged the tip of his cane on the marble floor three times. The noise seemed absurdly loud. Everything seemed loud, yet silent at the same time. I can't make it make sense, it just was. The door behind us chimed. Bob and I automatically turned to see another Mr. White just standing there motionless, staring. They were dressed identically. Same suit, hat, briefcase, cane, the same brilliant white hair, those empty eyes, both tall, very tall, in fact, yet slender. It was the same person. I could see Bob's head turning and looking back and forth at the two thin men. I saw his mouth open and him say some words, but there was no sound. He pointed, then his eyes widened in horror. Suddenly, that automated voice reminded us of cashier number two being available. I turned and the window was free. Mr. White had gone. I spun around, and the other Mr. White was gone. The bank was back to how it was. The usual hustle and bustle, and people making small talk, footsteps sounding on the shiny floor. Bob nudged me. We need to make this quick. I'm late for Miss Porter. I gazed up at the clock. 2.45 p.m. It couldn't be. But looking at my watch, it was. We had been in that queue for one hour and 40 minutes, yet from my perspective, it had been less than 10 minutes. To this day, I don't know what Bob saw that made him look genuinely petrified. He had no recollections of the events inside the bank. No Mr. White, no trying to talk but no sound coming out, no terror at whatever he had seen, just nothing. I returned to work shortly after the bank incident and was accused by my manager of taking liberties due to my then two-hour absence. Some 23 years later, I still wondered just what had happened on that Friday afternoon. The Mr. Whites were not like you or I. They had vanished. Gone. Was that what had made Bob react the way he did? Did he actually see Mr. White just disappear? Whatever people may think, I do know for certain that we lost over an hour of our lives, which cannot be explained. Bob also lost his memory of any and all interactions with the Mr. Whites. So, was it alien abduction? Was it some kind of form of psychosis? Or, was it a genuine, actual, first-hand glitch in the Matrix? You decide.
I just want to start by saying that I don't really believe in the supernatural and any of that weird stuff. I've never had any evidence that such things happening in my life, personally. But this is just something that I can't explain at all with normal logic. It all started on a normal Tuesday morning. I woke up, got dressed, brushed my teeth, made breakfast, and then headed out the door for work. The commute was the same boring car ride I always have, every single morning. I don't do much outside of work aside from the occasional bike ride around town to get my exercise in, so I'm used to how mundane everything feels. Well, I guess I was used to it. Everything on this particular day just kind of felt... off. My car seat didn't feel right. The color of the car itself wasn't the normal navy blue. It felt brighter, more pale. The toast that I made didn't taste right. Maybe that was down to the bread going bad and me not checking before making it, I don't know. But there was definitely something wrong with the immediate world around me. Neighbors outside mowing lawns and walking their dogs. The dogs not being the same kind as I remembered. The golden lab that my neighbor Gary had was seemingly replaced by a small Doberman. Maybe he got a new dog, I told myself. Gary also looked like he had dyed his hair blonde. I never knew him to be the type to dye his hair in the 15 years that I've known him. Hmm? Midlife crisis, maybe? Regardless of all the weird stuff that my brain seemed to be picking up along the way, I got to work without anything making me stop in my tracks. That is, until I got to my desk and noticed it was on the other end of the office. I asked one of my coworkers why my desk got moved, and they looked at me confused, stating that it had always been in the far left corner since before I'd started working there. That's what prompted my brain to dial in more closely. Everything around me was a shade too light or too dark, one centimeter to the left or right, or was just flat out across the room from where I thought it normally would be. I felt like I was in an episode of The Twilight Zone, albeit a pretty boring and tame one compared to most of those topics. I tried doing my work for the day, just brushing off any inconsistencies I felt along the way. Then I clocked out for lunch. I went to my favorite sandwich shop only to find it closed. Not just closed, though. It appeared old and vacant, like it hadn't been occupied in years. I feel like I got pulled into a different world, one where everything was basically the same but just a little off. I called my boss to let them know that I wasn't feeling well, and that I wouldn't be coming back to work after my lunch break. So, I drove home, ignoring the obvious inconsistencies that I was experiencing. As I'm walking up the steps to my apartment, I saw a woman coming out of it. It was my ex-girlfriend, whom I had broken things off with about a year prior, or thought that I had. What are you doing here? I managed to blurt out. A look of confusion and hurt rushed over her face. I was already out, I just forgot my keys, but are you alright, babe? She answered. Babe? Not only did my actual ex never call me babe, but even if she did, she wasn't my girlfriend anymore, so she had no reason to be calling me anything. I... sorry, just never mind. I'm having a bad day. Where are you going? I decided to play along to see where this thing went. To work? It's Monday, you know, she said. Right, well, just have a good one, I guess. I said through a fake smile. She looked at me for a second, contemplating if she should investigate further, but then she kissed me and left. I stood there for a few minutes, stunned, confused. After all the fights and the pain and the screaming, to feel a kiss from her again was so alien to me, but comforting at the same time. I walked inside and plopped myself on the couch, the room felt like it was spinning. Too much weird for one day. After about 20 minutes, 
My brain finally had had enough and shut itself down. I awoke about eight hours later to my dark apartment. I noticed that my girlfriend was nowhere to be found. Instinctively, I called her, and when she picked up, I heard the same deadpan tone I had after we finally said our goodbyes for the last time. I hung up before she could even finish her sentence. The next morning, I did exactly as the previous day, or any other day. Woke up, got dressed, made breakfast, and headed out the door. My car was back to its normal navy blue. The car seat felt like it fit properly again. The toast was even back to normal, and my neighbor Gary was walking his golden lab sporting his usual brown hair. I went about my day, worked at the desk in the far right corner, where it always was, ate at the sandwich shop that hadn't closed down, and after that, I never saw another thing out of the ordinary to speak of. I have no idea what happened to me. My only guess is that I glitched out of my world somehow and ended up in a near-identical one, but some things were slightly off. Like the color of my car being a different shade. Or an entire painful breakup that seemingly never happened. Hey, Raven. I just wanted to start by saying how much I love your podcast. It's seriously become a highlight of my day, and I always look forward to listening to it. Your storytelling skills are incredible. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Now, let me share this crazy story with you. So, I'm from another country, and every summer my husband, our four-year-old daughter, and I head overseas to visit my parents. Family time is a big deal for us, and since both my daughter and my mom have birthdays in September, we always plan our summer vacation to coincide with those special occasions. This year was no different. After all the birthday parties were over, and just before we were about to head back to the US, we decided to take some epic birthday pictures with the whole family. We set up in my parents' front yard, decked out with balloons and all the festive stuff. We were all posing and snapping away, having a blast. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed this girl in her 20s strolling by with her dog. Now, I gotta tell you, I've never seen this girl before in my life, and I pretty much know everyone in our small town. But, hey, I didn't pay much attention, and we went back to capturing those precious moments. As I was focusing on taking individual shots of my daughter, this girl suddenly stops and comes over to us. She asks, Hey, do you want me to take a group photo of y'all? Well, I appreciated the offer, but I let her know that we already had plenty of group shots. No harm done, right? I then went back to my task at hand. But here is where it gets weird. She just stood there, still lingering around like she had something else to say. I couldn't quite figure it out. Finally, I turned to her and she asks, Hey, isn't your husband in the Air Force? Can I ask him some questions? Now, that caught me off guard. I looked at my husband and he's such a friendly and talkative guy, so he didn't mind at all. They started chatting away, and I watched as my parents slowly made their way inside to prepare dinner, with my daughter following closely behind. Now, here's the kicker. As I joined my family inside, my dad tells me that he knows this girl. Apparently, she always asks him about how I'm doing and when I'll come to visit. But get this. I have never, ever seen her before. And let me tell you, our town is pretty small, and we mostly have Caucasian folks around here. But this girl, she's stunning and looks South Asian, so I'm positive that I would have remembered her. Trying not to dwell on it, I decided to help out with preparing dinner and setting the table. I pushed the weird encounter to the back of my mind, 
but as we were halfway through our meal, my husband was still outside talking to her. My mom, bless her heart, suggested that we invited her in for dinner. I mean, she seemed nice enough, so I went outside and told them to continue their conversation inside. Turns out, her fiancé is also in the Air Force. And, lately, he's been acting strange. That's why she was bombarding my husband with questions about how to help her fiancé and all that. Once everyone was seated and my husband started eating, the girl turned her attention to me. And here's where it gets even crazier. She starts reminiscing about how we used to walk to the bus stop together when we were around 20 or 21 years old. But here's the thing about that. I always walked to the bus stop alone. I never, ever walked with anyone. Yet she knew all of these details about my job back then and everything. It's like she had insider information on my life. She even knew my name, and that I had moved overseas. I'll be honest, Raven, the whole situation was just plain bizarre. She ended up staying for what felt like an eternity that night, like she didn't want to leave. Meanwhile, deep down, I was desperately hoping that she would get the hint and find her way out. It was such a peculiar and uncomfortable experience, I can't even begin to explain it. Well, after she left, I couldn't stop thinking about the things that she told me. So, I asked my dad about her again. And like he told me before, he sees her all the time out with her dog. He says that she's super nice and always asks about me making sure that I'm doing well. He told me that she is the daughter of the guy down the street that we always talked about when I still lived there. We talked about him because he never greeted anyone, and he just seemed grumpy. But never did anyone mention a daughter back then, and I also never saw one. Apparently she's even older than me, so she indeed must have lived on our street before I did. I still do not remember ever having met her, and I have a great memory. I even remember details from elementary school, but I can't remember a single thing about her. Never even seen her at a store, a party, or school, and we all went to the same school in town. It's just so bizarre, and it feels like she knows me from a different reality or universe but I never met her in this one. It's like a glitch in the Matrix or something. So, there you have it, Raven. This is the mind-boggling story that happened to me, and I just had to share it with you. Keep up the amazing work on your podcast, and I hope you find the story as intriguing as I did. If you have any thoughts or questions, let me know, and thanks for being such an awesome storyteller. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know if this story really qualifies as a glitch in the matrix, but I'm going to submit it as one because there was some weird level of synchronicity that occurred for sure, and I think that synchronicities count as glitches. Plus, I've heard a few stories about weird dreams on your glitch videos, so maybe this one would be right at home with those. Honestly, the whole thing really did send a chill down my spine, and while it might not mean much to some, it meant something to me. A few weeks ago, I had this really bizarre and vivid dream. It was one of those dreams that was so realistic that it felt like I was really there and living it. It wasn't a happy or pleasant dream. Far from it. It was traumatic. Unnerving. It was one of those dreams that make you jump up in a panic because it really messed with you inside. In the dream, I was, for some reason, standing on a long bridge in the middle of a storm. I was standing on the side where the sidewalk was on the bridge, like I'd been walking across it. And I remember thinking that the storm had hit really quick, 
The rain was just coming down non-stop. And I was standing there watching the water start to go crazy, like it was flooding. But suddenly, the water started rising rapidly and pelting the bottom of the bridge. I just remember thinking that I needed to run. I took off toward the end of the bridge, only for the water to go over it, and the bridge started cracking and collapsing in front of me. I remember slipping and trying to stand up so that I could run the other way, but the more that I struggled, the more the bridge started to just crumble apart like it was made of styrofoam. The more I struggled to get up, the more it fell apart in my hands and under my feet. The worst part about the whole thing, and all the anxiety and panic that I was feeling, was that I just kept thinking, where is my wife? It felt like I knew that I was going to die, but the whole time I was screaming out for her and trying to figure out where she was, and if she had gotten off the bridge in time, though I couldn't recall her ever being there with me at all. I woke up in a cold sweat, completely drenched, and actually crying. It took me a while, but I eventually calmed myself down and convinced myself that everything was okay. My wife was still asleep right beside me. There were no bridges in my house to worry about, and it was just this weird thing that my brain had made up for whatever reason. Now, that in and of itself was weird and distressing, but it was just a dream. However, fast forward a couple of days when my wife and I were just sitting outside on our patio and having our Sunday morning coffee. Out of the blue... My wife mentioned that she had a really weird dream the other day that was bothering her, which immediately caught my attention. She mentioned that when she was standing near a river, just watching the water, when it started raining really hard, and the river started rising and flooding. As she went through recounting the dream, a knot started to form in my stomach. She said that she was off to the side of the bridge, and she watched as the water started to tear the bridge apart and then she got hit with this wave of sadness and terror as she looked over and saw someone on the bridge that looked like me. She said that as she watched the bridge crumble and watched this person struggle, she tried to yell out and go to help them, but she couldn't. Something in the dream had pretty much cemented her in place, and she was stuck just watching the whole scene play out in front of her as this person that looked like me was stumbling and then was eventually swept into the river. She described how she was crying in the dream, rooted to the spot as she watched it all happen, feeling this disgusting sense of helplessness. Every little detail that she told me mirrored my dream. The storm, the bridge crumbling under the pressure of the water, me desperately trying to run to safety. It all played out the same, but from her perspective. It was as if we had experienced the same dream, but from two different points of view. I felt a cold shiver run down my spine as the uncanny synchronicity of the dreams set in. We had both seen the same terrifying event, experienced the same emotion, but from two different perspectives. It was like the world in our unconscious mind had a crossover episode or something. It left me a bit rattled. But I just sort of played it off to her and said something like, Well, I don't plan to be on any bridges anytime soon, so I think we're good. I ended up not telling her about my dream because it kind of felt like it would have been awkward to explain and just say, Oh yeah, me too. It did leave a bit of a strange mentality though. Can two people be so connected that they share dreams? Like, I understand finishing each other's sentence, but that's a conscious thing. This was completely subconscious or unconscious. Dreams are your brain filling in the empty spaces, at least from what I know, but this was really weird to me. So, I guess I have to ask the question. Was this just two brains so connected in our simulation that we made up the same movie in our unconscious state? Did we both somehow connect to an alternate existence where this actually happened? 
and we maybe saw it play out while we were asleep? Hopefully it wasn't a premonition, because if so, I'm avoiding every bridge for the rest of my life. In the end, I don't know, and I'll just happily live with the thought that this weird thing happened, and maybe I don't need an explanation. I would like one, sure, but I don't need one. Maybe it's for the best that this just remains unexplained. Hi, Raven. The story that I'm about to tell you actually happened today, and I immediately knew that I had to submit it. For background, my husband and I moved into our new place almost two months ago. We love it here, but we decided to do this move all on our own, without any help, so it's been rather slow and at times straining. I work from home, and... I also happen to be super handy, so while he's been at work, I've built all of our furniture, decorated everything, have unpacked all of the clothes, and more on my time off, which is quite more than him. He helps me whenever he can. I more than happily have taken control over everything. My husband letting me do all the decor? This woman says yes. I'll get into it now. So many of our clothes still need to be put away in our closet. We also had to get rid of many things. We both just have too much. And sadly for him, about 50% of his shirts that no longer fit him. He's been needing more t-shirts. His 28th birthday was a few weeks ago, and one of the many things that I got him was a black t-shirt that said, Born in 95. I was born later the same year, so I also got myself the same Born in 95 shirt, but in grey. I've seen him wear it a few times already, and I'm glad that he loves it. Here is where things get... goose bumpy. Today we woke up at the same time. I got up and went to use the restroom while he changed. Today he wasn't working. When I got out of the bathroom, I noticed that he had put the shirt on. We went down to eat breakfast, and towards the end of breakfast, we joked that I should put mine on as well, and we could match for the day. It's something that we haven't done before, and the joke became a let's do it thing. I have so many hampers of clean clothes to put away still, three of which are in our bedroom. I remembered unfolding my t-shirt while standing on the side of our bed and putting it away in the closet, but it wasn't in the normal part of the closet where the t-shirts are. I remember it being there because I wanted to wear it soon, and so I kept it separate from the rest. So I told him, it shouldn't be too hard to find it in the mess. I remember folding it and putting it in the closet from one of the clean hampers the other day. He said he couldn't wait for me to put it on. We then went upstairs so I could change and get ready for the day. When I get upstairs, I go to the closet and it's not there in the spot that I had left it, which was the bottom drawer which is normally his sweatpants drawer. I then start to have the weird feeling that I might have dreamt it, and that it was one of those instances where the dream was so real that I confused it for reality. My husband is laying on the bed, and I tell him, Hey, I could have sworn I put it here, and now it's not there. I'm going to start taking out the clothes from these hampers, and fold the easy things until I find it. It has to be here because I washed it. He replies, Okay, I'll be here, love. Take your time. I laughed. I might as well make something productive out of this. And he replies, I love it, and I'm proud of you. I hadn't worn this shirt since a few days after it came in the mail several weeks ago, so I was excited to find it. I made it a mission. About 20 minutes later, quite a bit of clean clothes are now folded on the bed. And that's when I sat next to him and told him, I literally folded it the other day, and now I'm questioning whether I dreamt it or not. 
he stated, Yeah, I remember you folding it too, just the other day, and putting it in the closet in that separate spot, bottom drawer. I said, I think it was just a dream that felt real, but it feels like a genuine memory that I had, so that doesn't make sense. Like, I remember it. He then says, Yeah, now I'm feeling the exact same way. It feels like it was now a dream of mine too, but it feels like it was a literal memory, not a dream. I remember you doing it. So, now at this point, we came to realize that we both either had the exact same dream, but from our own points of view, or have the same implanted memory that never actually happened. I mentioned in a light-hearted manner, we always talk and joke about what we're doing together in parallel universes, but what if something happened to both of us in that one, and we're now here? And we're both just having identical shared memories together from that one. His face actually got serious and he said, I actually think about it all the time. All jokes aside, I actually wonder. I also mentioned to him how I've occasionally been seeing bright split-second flashes of white light, like if someone was taking a picture from a camera. A camera, like Flash. He went on to say that he's been seeing the same flashes too. This is when we both sat there and realized that this memory was real, but that it didn't happen. Not in this timeline. I get goosebumps. Alright, well, I'm gonna keep taking out and unfolding the clothes until I find it, I guess. We have to match today. I said as I hopped back off the bed. I walk over to the hamper and picked up a shirt that was inside out. When I flipped it over, it was the shirt. It was oddly the very next item of clothing I picked up right after just having this revelation. I pulled it out and my husband got very wide-eyed. That's actually wild. There's like 90 pieces of clothing in these hampers and you found the shirt right after we just had our wild conversation. I got so many goosebumps, but my emotions were also mixed with excitement because we were now able to match today. I threw it on, but I thought about it a lot throughout the day. I truthfully think that we had memories from a parallel universe that something had happened to us in. And I wonder if his memory of it is what subconsciously also made him wear that shirt today. I started listening to these Glitch in the Matrix stories, and it made me remember something from my childhood that I'd almost forgotten about. I was about 13 and would ride my bike up and down various streets in my neighborhood. One street that I would often ride on was a small dead-end road. There were several houses on it, and a small parking lot that belonged to an equally small factory that was across the street from it. The factory was closed down, so there were no cars in the parking lot. I used to ride to that street and circle around in the parking area before going back towards home. One day, I was circling in the lot, and I heard someone call my name. I don't have a very common name, so it had to be me they were calling, and not someone else. I stopped my bike and turned to see a girl about the same age as me. She excitedly called my name again and told me her name, asking if I remembered her. I could only look at her confused because I didn't know who this person was. She asked if I didn't remember her, and I said no. She proceeded to tell me that we went to grade school together, told me what school and what grade we had been in together. She told me things that we used to do together, and all the fun that we used to have. And I could do nothing but stand and stare at her because nothing, absolutely nothing, rang a bell in my head. The school we'd both gone to was correct and I remembered the teacher she mentioned, but I could recall nothing of the things that she said we had done together. 
I'll be the first person to admit that I'm terrible at remembering names at times, but I should have remembered her face, if nothing else. And she did not look familiar at all. I felt bad as she kept talking about things that we had done while I stood there hoping something would click in my brain. And I would just suddenly go, oh yeah, I remember, but nothing ever did. And finally, I just said sorry, but I just didn't remember any of it. And she seemed rather defeated. With nothing else to do, I just turned around and biked back home. For several years, I often revisited that memory and would try to remember the things that she said we did together, but my mind was always blank. Then, as I got older, the memory faded. But it remained somewhere in the back of my mind, and was then brought back when I started listening to other glitch stories. Was this girl possibly from an alternate reality? In some other world, had we been good friends, but here I just didn't know her at all? I never saw her again after that. Although that could simply be because I wasn't looking for her when I rode my bike down that road. And if she saw me, she probably would not have called out to me again. Why bother if I didn't remember her after all? But now, I wonder. Did I totally blank out of my memory someone I had apparently been good friends with, despite having memories of other kids from that same time frame, and even younger? And even many years later, I can still recall? Or did I experience a glitch in the Matrix before it was even a thing. As the title says, I somehow split into two. This happened at my mom's house. I was around 16 at the time, as were my friends. I was hanging out with a couple of my friends in the computer room of my mom's house, around 2006-ish. None of my friends had consistent, unsupervised internet access, so we would sit in the room with my mom's PC at all hours, doing whatever a bunch of nerdy teenage anime video game fangirls would do. The door next to the computer led to two rooms. Directly across was my mom's room, she wasn't home, and right around the corner was the bathroom. It wasn't a hallway, but more like a section of doors with the dining room next to it, and then the door to the kitchen at the left of the dining room, and an open living room to the right. The three of us were sitting at the computer desk, two in chairs and one sitting on the floor. I got up to use the bathroom, leaving both of my friends sitting in the chairs with the door fully in view. When I was leaving the bathroom, I was about to go back into the computer room, but I also wanted to go to the kitchen to grab a snack for us. As I exited the door, it was like I made both decisions at the same time. I felt tired all of a sudden, and I had tunnel vision with like a visual snow effect. I remember turning towards the door, but at the same time walking through the dining room. I'm not sure how to explain it, but my vision split, seeing both directions when I moved. Then the visual snow got heavier for a moment, and when I snapped out of it, I was standing in the kitchen holding the house phone, as if I was going to call someone. There isn't a single person that I would be calling around midnight. I shook my head and rubbed my eyes while I put the phone back down. As I walked back into the room that my friends were in, they asked what the hell that was, and how I did it. They saw me standing in the doorway for several minutes, no expression on my face. They didn't acknowledge me at first, and then eventually asked if I'm okay. I continued to silently stare at them. My friends said that it looked like me, but not at the same time. I was taller and my clothes were slightly different. This entity turned around and walked away around the corner, and I walked in passing through it or something. 
The lights were off in the dining room, so it appeared like I went around the corner and then immediately came back in the doorway. Somehow, I was standing in the doorway staring down my friends, and at the same time in the kitchen, holding the house phone for no reason that I can fathom. I guess I tried to do both things I was considering when leaving the bathroom, but ended up standing around like an NPC in both situations. I did forget to grab a snack for us, though. We all ended up going to my bedroom in the converted attic. The door to it was at the back of the computer room, because all three of us were too creeped out to stay downstairs. I had just recently purchased my house, and my old washer and dryer wouldn't fit. Plus, they sucked, and my wife hated using them. So, she sent me on a mission to buy a new set. I did not do my research, and as I'm standing in the Lowe's appliance department coming to grips with what I'm up against, my contractor neighbor walked up behind me. He helped me pick out the exact units that I was going to purchase. I bought them, and then life got weird for a few minutes. When I got to the truck, with my two large boxes, there stands my neighbor waiting for me. I thought he was waiting to help me load them, but he just looked at the boxes and said something like, That's a gas dryer. You don't have gas. I bust his balls for a couple of moments about helping me pick the wrong units out, and it was as normal an interaction as I could have had. I went inside to do the return walk of shame on the items I literally never even left the parking lot with, and my neighbor walked to his truck. I'm at the return counter. The girl behind the register asked me my name. I told her and handed her my receipt from five minutes prior while explaining the situation. Without even looking up at me, she says again, Name? I tell her my name a second time, and she says nothing while typing into the computer. In comes my neighbor to the return desk with a gallon of paint. He waits in line behind me, saying nothing. The girl behind the register looks up at me and says, Name, sir? I tell her my name for the third time, pointing to the receipt on the counter, and try to explain the situation again. And she types into the computer some more, and for what was probably a solid minute, says nothing at all. Another girl at the return desk finishes with another customer and comes over to help. The new girl says to me while they both stare into the computer screen, Name? A fourth time. I give them both my name. Without taking their eyes off of the screen, the new girl says, and I kid you not, I'm sorry sir, but you don't exist. I got sort of lightheaded after she said that, because I was already thinking how strange this was. I said back, I don't exist, or I'm not in your system. Without answering me, the second girl says to my neighbor, Sir, I can help you over here, and moves to the next register as my neighbor walks past me, and without another word to me, returns his paint and walks out the door. Then, almost as if nothing weird had happened, the first girl just says, Well, here, my name. Here's your return. You'll have to purchase the new ones and we'll refund you for the ones you mistakenly purchased. Without even going back to appliances, there behind me stands a guy with the units that I needed on a dolly, ready to help me buy and load them into my truck. My neighbor was gone, but when I asked him about it, he didn't think there was anything weird about the whole thing. I, on the other hand, had an existential crisis, and I only barely managed to hold it together. A couple weeks ago, I was walking upstairs in my house, and I looked out the window of the second floor in the foyer. 
and there is a large tree in the front yard that covers half of the view of the window, but you can still see the sky above the tree from the window. There is a single, super bright star that is visible, and I always enjoy looking at it when I go upstairs for the night. On this night, I walked up the stairs and looked out the window, and I noticed that the tree completely covered the window so that no stars were visible. In fact, no part of the sky was visible at all. The only thing I could see was a massive tree. I thought that I must have missed something, or maybe it was cloudy and I just wasn't seeing correctly. So I walked back down the stairs again to see if I could see the star or sky from a different stair step. The tree completely covered the view no matter where I stood. All I could see were the tree leaves from the top of the window to the bottom. I thought, hmm, that's weird. I guess my tree must have suddenly grown extra tall and wide and I just didn't notice? I walked up and down the stairs three or four more times to be sure that I wasn't confused and that I wasn't somehow missing something. The tree was very tall and large, and no sky was visible at all, no matter which stair I was on. Still confused, I then went outside and looked at my tree in the front yard. I noticed it was extra tall and wide. I thought that it was odd that this was the first time I noticed how large and wide it was, but assumed maybe I just misremembered how it was. Or maybe it literally grew overnight. I chalked it all up to me being inattentive and thought that it was a bummer, that I wouldn't be able to see the stars from my window anymore. I kind of forgot about it all until the next night when I was coming up the stairs and happened to look out the window again. This time, though, the tree was back to the size that I thought it was supposed to be the day before and was not blocking the whole window anymore. I saw the same bright star that I had always seen out of my window for the last two years since I moved into my new house. The leaves were no longer blocking the view. I was so confused. I walked up and down my stairs several times to see if I could have been standing somewhere else and the tree would have blocked the view, like it had the night before. No matter where I stood, the tree never completely blocked the view of the sky from the window. I tried for about 10 minutes to find a spot on my stairs where the view I had the night before could be replicated, and I couldn't do it. In perplexed, I went outside and realized that my tree was no longer massively extra tall and wide like it was the day before. It was back to the way I'd originally thought it was. I spent so much time the first night trying to figure out why the tree blocked the sky view, and then trying to rationalize the change. I got really freaked out the next night when it was the exact opposite. I have no real explanation for this other than perhaps this was a glitch. If not in the Matrix, then maybe in my brain? I still find it pretty unsettling. I have a lot of shoes, but I don't have any double sets. I have one pair of everyday shoes. They're black on black Samoa Adidas. These are pretty much my everyday shoes, my most comfortable shoes, and I've only owned one pair ever in my life, and I've had this pair for 10 years. I have never bought any other pair of Adidas shoes. I have two different sets of boots. I have some white tennis shoes, and I have some nice dress heels and sandals, and flip-flops, and shower shoes, and house slippers. But... I have one single pair of black-on-black -black Samoa Adidas. These shoes are great quality, and have lasted me a really long time. I've never considered replacing them. I have nobody else that I know who would wear the same pair, and I've never seen them on anybody else who's come in or out of my house. My son has gigantic feet 
and if he somehow had the same pair, they would be like a men's 16, so I really do not understand how my shoes doubled. I got home from work and changed out of my work shoes. I took off my work clothes, put on some comfy clothes, and I keep my black Adidas on the left side of my bed tucked under the box spring. I pulled them out and slipped them on, and I went for a jog. I came home, took off my clothes, jumped in the shower, and when I came out, I picked up my shoes to place them back under my bed, where they go. And there's already a pair of black Adidas, my exact size, in that spot. I had just pulled these shoes from that spot to go jogging. It's not like I pulled my shoes from a different location and I somehow have always had two pairs and never noticed. This is exactly where I pulled them from, and there is a set sitting right there under my bed. I pulled them out and looked at them. The wear is exactly the same, which you can expect is pretty significant for shoes I've worn near daily for 10 years. The nicks on the side, the spot where my foot hit the gravel when I fell a couple years back, it's all the exact same. I pulled out both sets. I had four shoes in front of me. I was sitting there feeling like my brain was broken and I knew what I was seeing did not make sense. So therefore, it must be incorrect, somehow. I left both pairs out specifically so that when my son got home from school, I could ask him what the hell. Maybe he saw an exact same pair, the exact same size, outside in one of the communal areas around here and brought them in thinking they were mine? Maybe a friend of his left them over and we just happened to have the same wear and same size? My son comes home from school and I bring him into my room to show him that I have four shoes, when I should only have two, and he thinks I'm crazy. Because... There is now two shoes on the ground. Two. Not four. But I know that I was not imagining it. A bit of context first. I live in a small town that, together with two other smaller towns from the neighboring state, compose a kind of cluster, like a triangle with a town on each tip. Let's call them Towns A, mine, Town B, and Town C. The towns are no more than four miles apart from each other, and are all connected. For as long as I'm alive, the road between Town A and B, and Town B and C, were paved but the AC route remained a dirt road. I've been in both towns countless times, traveled these roads by bus, cars, motorcycle, bicycle, and even on foot for some occasions. I know these paths like I know the back of my hand. It's a beautiful place, surrounded by wooded hills, coffee and grape crops, rural communities, etc. So, it's 2019, and the prefectures of my town and Town C decide to pave the road between them. Since they're in different states, they agree to start paving each own its own side until the construction meets at the border. Great news for both towns. The construction begins. Every now and then I hear that the road is looking great. People would say things like, I've been to Town C this weekend and the construction looks nice already and can't wait till the road is finished, and so on. 2020 comes around, and so does COVID. Right before the lockdown strikes, we learn that the road was almost finished. Constructions were close to meet each other at the state border. Around one month stuck indoors, we're desperate for a change of scenery and some fresh air. So, we decided to take a drive along towns B and C, enjoying the view and some music. We wouldn't even get out of the car, just drive. At this point, we had heard that the construction had finished and the road was now smooth and paved. 
I specifically remember my grandmother saying it as she went to Town C to deliver supplies to her sister at the time. One morning, we all hop in the car and just take off. We went to Town B and then Town C, but as we left Town C, ready to enter the road, we were shocked to find that nothing had changed. It was still the same old dirt road that we had known for decades. Confused, we returned home, noticing that we were the only ones on the road that day. We couldn't spot any sign of construction or new infrastructure. Absolutely nothing had changed. We'd heard so much about it from so many different people that it just made no sense. The only strange thing was that we didn't see anyone else on the road but us, after we left Town C. It was a bit unusual, but nothing impossible at that time. Apart from all that, it was a beautiful day and we all had a great time. When we shared our experience with relatives and friends, they found it just as puzzling as we did. Some even suggested that we might have taken the wrong road, <laughs> but we know that that's absolutely impossible. However, by the end of 2020, as things were trying to get back to normal, we decided to revisit the road. And, lo and behold, it was indeed paved, just as everyone had claimed before our first drive. My father jokingly suggests that we may have traveled in time, and sometimes I can't help but wonder if there's some truth to that. Okay, this might get a little long, but I'm trying to include as much detail as possible. Seven and a half years ago, I, 42, female, opened a bar slash restaurant. There was a little alcove area, sort of set back from the main dining room. I decided to hang wallpaper in the alcove, the thick type that looks like tin tiles, if you paint it properly. I hung the wallpaper myself, and while I do most of the design and decoration work in my bars, I'm not incredibly good or exacting at some of the tasks, even though the end product is usually fine. The alcove, maybe 10 foot by 8 foot, had three walls. Instead of a fourth wall, it just opened up into the dining room and had two electrical outlets one on the left wall, and one on the right. If you were standing inside the area with your back to the main dining room. I papered the left wall first, kind of haphazardly. I held a strip of wallpaper up to the section with the outlet, and I made a vague outline of where to cut the wallpaper so that the outlet would be accessible through it. Since I am the way that I am, I didn't line it up perfectly almost, and I had to redo the strip, being more careful that time. I worked my way around the walls clockwise, and about an hour later I got to the second outlet. I was tired, so I made myself measure twice, cut once, so the second outlet would properly line up the first time. While I was meticulously measuring, my buddy John, 42, male, came over to the space to check on my progress. He is way better at home improvement stuff than me, and as soon as he walked into the future restaurant, he laughed, because he knew that I had messed up the first outlet. I admitted that I had been impatient, messed up, and was trying to get the second outlet to work right the first time. Fast forward four and a half-ish years, COVID shutdown was in full effect, and John was helping me work the to-go food pickup window. We'd converted to to-go only like a lot of restaurants. The unused dining room became a warehouse and storage space of sorts, and we used it for dry food prep and for staging pickup orders. One day I was making some new menus, and John was working the pickup window. I was trying to plug my laminator into the leftmost alcove outlet, but since the dining room was full of dry goods boxes and supply tables, 
there wasn't anywhere to sit the laminator where its relatively short cord would comfortably reach the left outlet. John saw me looking for a way to arrange stuff, and he said, Just plug it into the right outlet, the good wallpaper one. We laughed, because even though I'd worked so hard on that second outlet, I ended up just shoving a couch against it, and it had not been used since the restaurant opened. So, I moved the couch away from the wall a bit, and... You guessed it. No outlet. No cut in the wallpaper, no patch, nothing. I called John over and we just sort of stared at the space where we knew the outlet was. Nothing we came up with satisfied the confusion. I even called my perfectionist, amateur handyman dad and asked him if he remembered an outlet there. And of course he did, because I had told him about my attempts to eyeball the first one and he jokingly reminded me that he had raised me better than that. Three years later, we all still mention this from time to time. Any ideas? My father passed away over this past winter after a long battle with leukemia. He and I were close, and... He actually passed away when my fiancé and I were having some issues, and I had decided to spend the night at my parents' house. He wanted me to handle everything when he passed so that my mother wouldn't have to. He knew that she would be a mess, and knew that I could still maintain a strong exterior, even when being an emotional wreck on the inside. So, weirdly... It felt like he waited until I was there to die. And unfortunately, the image of him lifeless the next morning is something that I don't know if I'll ever get over. Anyway, I decided to stay with my mom for a while, through the holidays at least, and to help her adjust to being alone for the first time in 50 plus years. I was staying in the one bedroom that was upstairs. She still slept in their bedroom on the main floor. My partner and I were still having issues, so I wasn't sleeping well. I was up late most nights, just stressed from all angles. I was also out of work at the time and stressing about interviews. One night, while I'm laying in bed watching TV, I get a text alert. When I look at my phone, I have a message from my mother that read... I know you're here with me. That seemed like an odd 3am text, so I replied, Are you okay? I didn't get a reply, so I decided to go downstairs and check on her. She was asleep in her bedroom, snoring away. I was weirded out, but I figured I would just ask her in the morning if she remembered messaging me and then immediately falling asleep. Before heading back upstairs, I went to the kitchen to grab some water, and while passing through the living room, I saw her phone charging on a side table. I grabbed my water, and I went back upstairs to double-check the timestamp on the message, thinking it had actually come through earlier or something. Maybe there was some kind of delay. And in the morning, I asked my mother about it, and she had no idea what I was even talking about. She went and grabbed her phone from the living room and seemed to be as freaked out as I was. We kind of laughed it off awkwardly and said that it was my dad reaching out from beyond the grave and left it at that. But it's always bothered me the way that it was worded. If my dead father were to text me, wouldn't it be just know that I'm here with you or I'll always be with you? something along those lines, but instead it said, I know you're here with me, as if I've died too, or am soon going to, or it read like something a living person would say to the dead. I've thought, maybe he's in another timeline now, where the family is all together. I just don't know. 
I think about this often because I have no explanation for receiving the text since the phone was in a room alone when I received a message from it. And even resolving to it being delivered much later than it was sent, I do believe my mother in her confusion about it. She doesn't use her cell much anyways, and was using it even less because she was overwhelmed by people calling her and the house phone to check in on her. I just needed to get this off my chest, and see if there's any other interesting theories about what it meant. Like, maybe I'm dead. Maybe my dad is alive in an alternate universe. This happened three days ago, and I'm still bothered by it. So, I had used my AirPods on a walk, and upon returning home, I put them on the charger in my kitchen. Later, while making dinner, I disconnected my AirPods to plug in my iPad, leaving my AirPods on the kitchen counter. After dinner, I was putting laundry away in my walk-in closet with my infant, not yet walking, sitting on the floor playing. Note, she never left my side. I noticed that the bottom drawer of our filing cabinet was ajar, which I hardly go into, and my AirPods case was sitting on the bottom of the drawer. I rushed to the kitchen where I remember leaving my AirPods, and they're not there. I don't remember going into my bedroom at all until I started putting away laundry. I rack my brain trying to explain how my AirPods could have made their way into a drawer that I seldom go into without me remembering putting them there. Even more strange, when I open the case, my left AirPod is missing. I had just had both of them about an hour prior when they were on my charger. How could I suddenly be missing one? I start tearing apart the cabinet, but I cannot find the AirPod anywhere. I put the baby to bed and I try to find the missing AirPod using Find My, but it won't connect. I try multiple troubleshooting tips, but cannot connect to the missing AirPod, only the one that I have. I gave up my search after about an hour, and I tried to relax with TV before bed. I still cannot figure out how my AirPod made it into the cabinet from the kitchen, and how did I lose one? I start wondering if the baby may have gotten a hold of it. Did she swallow it? But she was sitting right next to me the whole time, and she was never in that drawer, and I never saw her with an AirPod. But where could it be? So I decided to go to bed. I walk into my room to my side of the bed, and there in the middle of the floor in front of my nightstand is my missing left AirPod. Now, I had not set foot in that part of the room since I had gotten up for the day that morning. The baby had not been in that part of the room either. No one was in that part of my bedroom all day, including myself. This part of the room is a good 20 feet away from the filing cabinet in my closet, with a large bed in between. How on earth did my AirPod get there? And sure enough, I could now connect Find My to the missing left AirPod, where before I couldn't. I try shaking the AirPod case upside down to see if the AirPods can fall out somehow, but they're held in magnetically. I have no explanation for this. Hello. I listen to your show often, and the glitch stories are my favorite. I knew that this is where I would share my experiences. I'll start with the one that shook me the most. These incidents started in 2020. I was staying in a one-bedroom apartment with my two kids. The kids had the room, I had the sofa bed in the living room. A very small apartment, as I was coping with COVID lockdown and work from home times being a single parent, it was tough, but we were happy. The living room wall was the other side of my kids' room. 
One early morning at around 2 a.m., I heard my daughter laughing and trying to whisper, No, no, no. Ah, uh, really? Like she does when she gets too involved in whatever video game she was playing at the time. My concern was her being up so late. I went to go reprimand her and she was asleep. Like, deep sleep. And all of her devices were on the floor or their room desk charging. I know my kids. I know when they're faking. And she was asleep. I brushed it off and went to lie back down myself. The next time, maybe about two weeks later, I was woken up by the sound of my son waking up. He was six at the time, and he has autism. His comfort is to rock back and forth while sitting when he's happy or excited. When he wakes up, he either turns on the TV, plays on his Nintendo Switch, his tablet, or comes to get me. I thought to myself as I listened to him rocking on the bed, shoot, I forgot to charge his tablet and his Switch, and was thinking how, as a mom, I had dropped the ball. I heard him getting frustrated trying to turn on his switch and I hear him banging it on the bed. Nothing new. I yell out, stop banging the switch, I'll charge it. I get up to soothe him and he is deep asleep. The Nintendo switch was on the other side of the room. He was still under the covers asleep. Now I couldn't pretend that this did not happen. The sound of him woke me out of my sleep. As I was wide awake, I could hear him rocking. I heard the sound of him attaching the controllers to the Nintendo. I heard him banging it, and I heard his angry expressions. I plugged in his Nintendo so it would be charged when he actually woke up and sat down staring at the wall. This happened two more times in the same apartment. I would wake up to the sound of my kids laughing, or talking, only to find them asleep. I share a wall with several neighbors. Only one has children, but they were older. Every parent knows the sound of their child. I heard my children all those times. I know how they laugh. I know how they sigh. I moved two years later, and so far it has never happened again. Now, I don't know if I was hearing different timelines. Just a glitch? I don't know. But I would... Love to know what that was. As a statement to make before I actually read this story, those of you who have been around for a while will probably know who AC Smart is. Specifically, you'll know them by their kleptomaniac philodendron baby. If you know of those stories, then you know who this person is. Anyways. I've had my first glitch since Baby, the kleptomaniac philodendron, dried up seven years ago. Two, actually. Well, three, but two are related. The simplest one is from just a few months ago. A grocery bag of office supplies, coloring books, etc. I collected to donate to a worthy cause. There was a second bag of DVDs and books. I put both of them in my car in the evening, so I wouldn't have to remember the next morning. I live out in the country, and yes, the doors to get to the garage were locked. But when I got to work in the morning, all that was there was the bag of books and movies. The bag of office supplies was missing, and I haven't been able to find it. It's been months, and I cleared everything out for a long-distance trip, and I scoured the house, but the bag of office supplies has never shown up. Now, the second and the third. Well, remember that long-distance trip that I just mentioned? When I prepared for it last year, I ordered a spare key from my car. I had only received one when I bought the car, and I needed a spare. Long story. Just note for anyone's future, when you buy a car, before you sign anything, make sure that you have two keys for the car. If they don't, make sure they take responsibility for ordering you a second key, or take $300 off the price of the car. 
And because that's how much a key typically costs. So, I ordered a spare key. When I picked it up, it had a yellow plastic tag attached. But here's the thing. When I opened the back pocket of my hip bag to stow the spare key, there was already a spare key. One with a blue plastic tag attached. Okay, I know what you're thinking. I made a mistake. I actually got two keys, not one, when I bought the car. That's possible. I assumed that was what happened. I did show a friend the three keys, and they remember them. So the existence of the three keys is certain. But that was last year. This year, when I prepared for the trip, I discovered that I still have the spare key with the yellow tag. The one that I purchased. The other spare, however, is missing. Remember, I did show the three keys to my friend, so there were three. Now there are two. The key that I couldn't account for is missing, gone back to whatever neighboring dimension it came from. But here's the thing. The blue tag from the mystery key is still in the back pocket of my bag. This happened around early July of this year. It took me a while to submit this story because I was afraid that it may seem unbelievable. But then again, I'm sure Raven has read a lot of crazy stuff. I absolutely have. So let's get right into it. I delivered for Uber Eats and DoorDash for my job. On this day, I started off my day with an Uber Eats order for a small local coffee shop around 10 a.m. I get to the coffee shop and no one is in line ahead of me. The inside of the store, including the floor, is clean and normal. I show the shop worker, barista, the order on my phone. She has the drinks ready on the side and takes a couple of minutes to bag up the food items. By now, a few more customers had come into the coffee shop and there was three people lined up behind me. As the barista gave me the bag with the food and drink for my order, and I was about to walk away, a FedEx driver who was lined up behind me tapped me on the shoulder very hard. He pointed to the ground where I was standing right in front of the counter, and there was a pile of cash scattered on the floor. I'm 100% certain that it was not there when I came in. There was nothing on the floor. Initially, I thought, okay, maybe a few bills could have slipped out of my pocket as I took out my phone to show the barista my order. So, I go to quickly pick up the cash, which was a few 20s, 10s, 5s, and 1s, all totaling $204. It was quite a few bills, so it took me a while to get it picked up. As I'm gathering it all, I realized that I could not have left the house with this much cash. In the couple of minutes it took me to gather all the bills, I could feel everyone in the store watching me, but no one said a word. I just say, I'm sorry, I'm a mess today, as I leave to deliver my order. I quickly go drop off the order, and then I'm trying to process what just happened. If the cash belonged to a customer behind me, they would have certainly said something in the few minutes it took for me to pick it all up. It definitely wasn't the FedEx driver's money, unless he wanted to blow 200 bucks to play a weird prank on me, and then never let me know about it. The coffee shop opens at 8am, so they couldn't have made that much in tips in that time frame. Had it been the contents of their tip jar or their cash on hand in the register, they certainly would have said something while I was picking it up. This coffee shop is right next to a credit union, but I don't know how cash they have in their secure holding could end up at my feet. About three weeks pass before I get another order for this specific coffee shop. I'm a bit nervous going in, worrying that someone might say, hey, that's the guy that took the money. However, there was nothing like that. They quietly handed me my order. 
as I was leaving, I kept checking the floor several times, but no pile of cash this time. Hi, Raven. Love the channel. Keep up the great work. Have you ever wondered how many glitches go by unnoticed? Ever wondered how the Matrix resolves these glitches without revealing too much of itself? That's something that I've thought about quite often. Let me explain. Back in 2019, my partner and I were living in a two-bedroom apartment with our dog, Lily. Lily was a border collie and required a lot of exercise, so we would make sure to take her for walks whenever possible. One morning, I woke up after sleeping in a little and realized that my partner had gone out. She must have gone to the shop, I thought. I walked out into the lounge room and noticed that Lily's leash was still hanging on the hook. I called out to Lily and she soon appeared behind the couch and came running to me. Oh, why didn't mom take you with her? I asked. I played with Lily for a while and then went to the office and logged onto my computer. Then, about a minute later, I heard the front door open. Babe, is that you? Where have you been? I went to the shop, she replied. Well, why didn't you take Lily? I asked. I did. I froze. What? That isn't possible. I was just playing with Lily not more than a minute ago, and a walk to the shop would take at least ten minutes. Besides, wasn't Lily's leash hanging on the hook just now? Utterly confused, I stood up and walked into the hallway, and sure enough, there was Lily, standing in the open doorway, still wearing her leash that my partner was just then in the process of removing. My eyes must have almost popped out of my head. Slowly, I turned around and walked back to the office trying to figure out what I had just seen. I had heard of glitches in the Matrix before. In fact, my workmate had mentioned the phenomenon just a few days prior. I was open to the idea, so I just put it down to that. But it got me thinking. What happened to my copy of Lily? Was she simply removed from the simulation? Did she cross over to another reality? One in which my partner never did take her to the shop? Who knows? What I do know is that whatever the Matrix did to resolve the glitch, it did so while my back was turned, while my attention was on my computer. I often wonder what would have happened if I had, for example, just sat there on the couch with my copy of Lily until my partner had come home with her copy. Then there would have been two Lilies in the same location. Surely the Matrix could not afford to reveal itself in such an obvious way, and would attempt to prevent such a situation from occurring. Setting off the smoke alarm, causing something to randomly crash from the office cupboard, anything to divert my attention, so that my copy of Lily could be safely despawned without me seeing it happen. As much as our simulated reality seems broken and buggy, it almost always seems to find an out a way to resolve these glitches without revealing too much of itself. So, props to you, Matrix. Last week, I had something happen to me that I can't quite shake off. I mean, it was a super mundane thing, but it was also incredibly bizarre. I figured I would send it in, and you and your listeners can decide for yourself in the end. Maybe it was nothing. Maybe I'm crazy. Or maybe it was a glitch. It was a super hot afternoon, and as we do here, I had a major craving for some sweetened iced tea. I had a pitcher in the fridge that was just unsweetened iced tea, so I had to pour it and add some sugar to sweeten it, but that's no big deal. I poured a big glass, added some sugar, and stirred it up all nice, and then added a couple cubes of ice. Not going to lie, it was a work of art. 
I grabbed my tea, and before I could even take a sip, nature called. Probably the pouring of the liquid causing that reaction that we all seemed to have. I went ahead and pulled a coaster from the stack on the coffee table and placed my glass down on it, and dashed off to the restroom. After I did my business, I walked over to the sink and washed my hands, and then started the routine of looking at my face for any imperfections and blemishes. That's when I noticed something strange. There was a mole on my neck that I had never seen before. It wasn't huge or anything, but it was decently sized, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't there prior. I rubbed it with my finger, thinking maybe it was something on my skin or something, but it was definitely there, and definitely a mole. Now, this in and of itself isn't too odd. That happens, right? Like, moles can randomly appear in places they never were, I think. I shook off my curiosity, and I left the bathroom, thinking it was just a thing that happened. I walked out into my living room and went to grab my iced tea, and to my confusion, it wasn't there on the table. I stared, confused, and a little alarmed that someone may have broken into my house and stolen my tea? Yeah, a weird thing to consider, but it was definitely gone. I looked around the room at all the possible surfaces where I could have put it, but nope, no tea. I thought that maybe I had brought it with me into the bathroom which is something that I would never do, but it clearly was not in the living room. Of course, I checked, but no, no tea there either. Feeling a bit frazzled, I went back to the kitchen thinking maybe I just left it in there and didn't realize it. And sure enough, my cup was on the kitchen counter, but the cup was completely empty and dry and the pitcher was full to the brim. It was as if I had never poured the glass of tea at all. I just stood there frozen, trying to make sense of what had just happened. Had I imagined pouring the tea? Had my actions somehow been reset or undone? I glanced up at the window and saw my reflection, once again noticing that mole on my neck. And honestly... A chill went down my spine. This was a really small glitch, but the two things going together like this, within a few minutes, it was kind of creepy for me. Nothing else feels different, and yet I can't shake that feeling that something inexplicable happened in those very brief moments. But again, I don't know. I don't know what this was. Did something happen while I was in the bathroom? Did I jump timelines or realities or whatever you call it? Everything else is as it always has been, but these two little things were just so weird to me. I'm not on Reddit a lot, so... I don't really know how to start this, but here is some context to the situation. In December of 2021, I met this girl online who happened to live in my area. We started talking, and after about a week she came over to my house and picked me up for our first date. A few months later, in March of 2022, we officially started dating. Some key points that you need to know is as follows. Firstly, she drives a very recognizable car. It is a sunflower yellow Volkswagen Beetle with a black drop top that has silver rims. Additionally, it is a very particular shade of yellow which makes it even easier to distinguish. At the time, she had split green and black hair where the green was a mix between emerald green and pastel jade. In November of 2022, eight months later, I broke up with her after finding out that she had been cheating on me, and we've been no contact since then. Finally, she lives about 40 minutes away from me, and has really no business being in the part of town where I live. So, 
this is where things get weird. A few times now, I've seen similar looking cars, and even one time a car that looked exactly like hers. However, never has it been her driving. Last week, I left my house and was maybe only a few minutes down the road. As I'm sitting at a four-way intersection, a car comes from the right side and passes on to the left, basically cutting across the intersection perpendicular to where I was sitting. It was an exact match to her bug. Same shade of yellow, black drop top, silver rims. I look to see who's driving it, and it's a girl who looks to be about my age, with exact same split-colored hair as my ex. In the moment, I didn't think much of it besides, oh, well, there goes my ex. But the more I thought about it, the more I've been freaking myself out. Now, I've never been one to believe in superstitious things, however, this moment in particular has been on my mind quite a bit. I know in my heart that there are unexplainable things that go on, but I try not to think about it too much. And the amount of coincidences that had to have taken place for me to experience what I saw feels like it's not a coincidence anymore. So let me get this straight. You're telling me that a girl who looks exactly like my ex is driving an actual replica of my ex's car down to the very last detail who also happens to be driving in the direction of my house, just passed by. Yeah, I don't think so. The more I thought about it, I started to wonder if that actually was my ex. But according to all of her social media, her last post was a few days ago, her hair is completely different color than it was before. She also was put on some weight. So, we've now confirmed that it was not my ex driving past me last week. I'm about to sound like a wacko, but stay with me. Every fiber in my body is telling me that I had just experienced a past version of my ex driving to meet me for the first time, and I'd experienced from an outsider's perspective. I know that that sounds insane, and that I should probably take my meds, but... I swear, I've been thinking about it so much, and it adds up. Her hair? Check. Her car? Check. Her destination? Check. Her reason for being in my part of town? Check. It all makes sense. Except for the fact that parallel universes don't exist, right? I know this sounds fake as hell, and if you think so, that's alright. I just wanted to share this experience with the internet in hopes that someone could take me out of my insanity, or, rather, egg me into it. Hi, Raven. First, I would like to apologize because English is not my first language, so it'll be a little hard to explain what happened to me. I found your podcast channel on Spotify around a month ago. I especially enjoy your glitch stories. I have to admit that I felt relieved that I'm not alone. Most of my family and friends think that I'm crazy because these weird situations happen to me all the time. The most unsettling situation that I can't explain was around two months ago. At that time, I was in my dorm studying for exams. I was nervous, so I took a walk for groceries. I took my big black backpack with me, locked my dorm up, and unzipped my wallet. There was also a little pocket with a zip, so I put the key in it. First, I would also like to inform you that I have OCD, so I'm always checking things again and again. Where I put items, if I locked the doors, etc. In this little pocket in my wallet, I always keep a USB with my schoolwork, and also my key. This is important information. Sorry for the long text of explaining, but please bear with me. I put my wallet into the backpack and walked outside. At the grocery store, everything went as normal. As I was paying for my stuff, I removed my wallet and paid with my card, 
and then immediately put my wallet in the front pocket of my backpack. I was buying a lot of stuff, and not everything fit in my bag, so I asked for a paper bag. When I got back to my dorm and unzipped my wallet and the little pocket in it to take the key, I froze. The key that I needed was there, but the USB was missing. Inside my dorm room, I checked my whole wallet again, and nothing. I put my wallet on a table and went over to my backpack and paper bag. Well, at that moment, I just wanted to evaporate. All of my important work was on it because my laptop was slow, and I expected it to break any time soon. Also, on the USB were pictures of my dog that passed away. I felt burning anxiety in my body. I checked everything at least three times. I pulled every item from the bags, but nothing. There was no USB. To be certain, I continued to check my whole dorm room. I sat on a chair and spent ten minutes not blinking or moving in shock. I clearly remembered putting the key right next to the USB. I had a vivid image in front of my eyes. When I calmed down, but still with tears coming, I called my mom. She advised me to go through my stuff again or to go back to the shop. At that moment, I was absolutely certain that it was lost, 100%. I decided to put what I had bought in my cabinets and in the fridge. As I was reaching for the last item from the paper bag, guess what? My USB. I was shocked, because I put everything out and back, and it was not there. I was relieved, but it didn't make any sense. How did it get there? One, the paper bag was new. Two, I didn't unzip the little pocket in my wallet with a key and USB, as there was no reason to do so. And three, I put my wallet in my backpack. To this day, it does not make sense to me at all. I still talk to my mom about it, and she also can't process this weird thing that happened. How did my USB teleport from a zipped pocket in my wallet into a new paper bag? Why didn't I find it the first time? Or the second time? Or the third time when I was searching for it? Did my USB teleport? Glitch? Or was this an angel looking after me and somehow bringing my USB back to me? I guess I'll never know. I have a lot of stories that I'll submit to you in the future, as I feel like this is the right place to share, and sending a lot of love to all listeners. This happened during a fairly typical work week, and honestly is an incredibly subtle but kind of creepy glitch for me. I had a routine whenever I worked in the office. Every night before work, I would prepare my lunch so that I didn't have to do it in the morning. Every night during the week, my girlfriend would head to bed, and I would head to the kitchen to get my lunch put together, and then would also go to bed. On this particular night, I made a turkey and cheese sandwich. I grabbed a small bag of chips from the cupboard, and then grabbed the last apple that we had that was sitting in the bowl. On this night, however, I wanted to go ahead and slice up the apple, because I'm not too privy on the skins. So I grabbed the cutting board, sliced it up, and cut off all the apple skins. I then tossed the slices into a Ziploc. Then I went to bed, where my girlfriend was already half asleep. The next day was normal, completely uneventful in the first half, filled with the usual hustle and bustle of work. When lunchtime came around, I locked my machine, grabbed my lunchbox from my desk drawer, and walked upstairs to the lunchroom just to get away from my desk for a while. I went over to the same corner table that I like to sit at, and stared at my phone for a few minutes, before finally opening my box to eat my sandwich. I pulled out the sandwich, the chips, 
And then when I went to grab the apple, I paused. Something was off. I stared for a second, and my heart skipped a beat when it slowly clicked in my head. Instead of my carefully prepared sliced apple wedges that I had meticulously prepared the night before, sitting there in my box was a whole uncut apple. Same type, same color, but whole. I blinked for a second, thinking that either my eyes were playing tricks on me, or I was losing it. But no, there it was. A whole untouched apple, as if mocking my confusion. It was just one of those things that happened, that you can see in front of you but doesn't make any sense. At first I thought that maybe my girlfriend was messing with me, maybe she'd swapped it out, and I texted her asking if she had, but again it clicked that the apple I cut up was the last one in the bowl. When we buy apples, we buy small bags, and we put them in the fruit bowl in the kitchen. So. It wasn't like there was another apple somewhere else that she could have swapped it with. Plus, when she texted me back, she said that she had no idea what I was talking about. Honestly, I don't see any reason as to why she would lie about it. If it were a prank, she would have owned up to it. Because otherwise, what was the payoff? To this day, I seriously cannot explain how or why this happened. I half expected to find a bag of apple slices somewhere in the fridge, or on my desk or something, but never did. I also checked the trash can in the kitchen when I got home from work, because, logically, it would be filled with apple peels, right? It wasn't. There wasn't a single apple peel in the can, so it was as if I had never sliced or peeled the apple. The only other logical explanation would be that someone at my work swapped the apples out. But to do that, they would have had to have waited for me to walk away from my desk, gotten into my drawer, opened my lunch bag, and swapped out the apple, and then put it all back without anyone else noticing them. Plus, this would require them to know that I had brought sliced apples instead of a whole one. And it's not like I went around bragging that I had cut up an apple last night. Honestly, it's these small and inexplicable moments that remind me that there is more to our reality than meets the eyes. If nothing else, it's enough to keep you wondering what it is that's out there that is playing these little tricks on us. Hey Raven, I'm a very new listener of the channel, and this is my very first story. This might not be particularly scary or interesting, and it might not even be a glitch per se, but in my honest opinion, I believe it was. A teensy bit of context first. My parents' relationship is really rocky, and they fight a lot over stupid, petty reasons. But... There are times when they tolerate each other. However, this recent fight, or rather tantrum as you'll soon find out, it was started over literally nothing. The day before yesterday, and for a pretty good while before then, my parents were getting along completely fine. That particular day, they were chatting and having normal conversations about summer plans before Dad left for work. Mom and my sibling and I had a normal rest of the night. We went to bed at our usual time, and then Dad came home at around midnight. I was in bed at this time, searching for ASMR videos to fall asleep to, and I heard Dad shuffle around downstairs before heading upstairs, walking past my room and into their bedroom where Mom was already in bed. Minutes later, though, I heard their door open and Mom's footsteps descending down the stairs. She went into the kitchen and stopped. I didn't hear anything else after that. 
Then Dad's footsteps came from the room and descended down the stairs and into the kitchen, and he stopped there too. I still didn't hear anything. It was completely silent. No talking, no shuffling, no noises whatsoever. Our house is pretty small, and when my parents speak, they never talk at an acceptable volume. They shout. No matter what. It could be a quiet place, and they would still be shouting at each other. I immediately thought, what the hell are they doing? Not even a minute went by, and Mom just as silently walked back upstairs and went back into their bedroom. Dad followed a little while after, also completely silent. The next day, Mom and Dad were not talking to each other at all. I've experienced the silent treatment before, but I remember what happened the previous night, so I was even more confused this time around. Mom didn't even eat lunch with Dad, something she always did despite their other fights. Then, today, in the morning, Dad left early for work and Mom broke down and cried and threw a huge tantrum, thinking that my sibling and I couldn't hear her. She kept sobbing loudly about how Dad was so mean, how he was a bad person. I've gotten this treatment from her plenty of times, the last time being over my personal choice to buy and use makeup, so I mainly just got really annoyed. But at the same time, I was even more confused. Nothing happened. There was no argument or fight that night. I quite literally heard nothing. When Dad got home, they still refused to talk to each other until Mom finally decided to break the ice, and then they actually started a huge shouting match tantrum, in the open garage in front of all the neighbors, no less. They didn't get involved in the end. Mom was yelling that Dad thinks he can do what he wants, and Dad was yelling that Mom needs to get off his back. It was really nonsensical babble that had nothing to do with anything. They screamed to the point where I was fully expecting Dad to just pick up a tool and smack Mom with it. Eventually, they both calmed down after almost screaming their lungs out, and then did a full 180. They suddenly started talking normally. Like I said, they are always shouting, but this was the normal shouting that I mentioned earlier. And they were getting along. They started talking about summer plans again, and then about the dessert they were going to have at that moment. I am still so confused as to what exactly happened, and honestly I'm a little scared. I feel like either this was a glitch, or both of my parents went insane and got possessed for a bit. To begin with, this story is real, and I'm 100% sure that it did happen. I wasn't dreaming or in a daze. For context, I work at a petrol station in the UK as a member of staff for the night shift on this particular late Saturday night. So, on with the story. The shift started off all the same as they did previously quiet, and extremely cold, when an old woman came into the shop. I thought to myself, that was a little bit odd, considering it was just about to turn midnight, and we don't get many elderly people turning up at this time of night, in all of my years working there. But I shrugged it off, thinking that she probably ran out of milk or something. I started to check the stock when I saw her pick up a small basket and make her way through the crisps and sweets aisle. I thought, oh, she probably fancies some snacks, when all of a sudden, she disappears. I kid you not, she vanished into literal thin air, and the shop went even more cold and eerie than it was before she even arrived. I decided to look around the shop, in between aisles to see if she was looking at another section, but she was gone. I went back to the cashier desk when I see a single bag of crisps fall on the floor. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, 
and I had this cold shiver run down my spine. I went to go and pick them up, and when I went to put them back on the shelf that they fell off of, the whole entire shelf was empty. I was in absolute shock. I blinked really hard to see if I was seeing this correctly. How on earth did everything vanish? I said aloud. I seriously started to become freaked out, so I went outside to see if it was some sort of joke, like teens messing around, but it was as silent as ever. In the distance, I saw that same elderly lady as she stood there with literal black eyes, and it gave me the most spine-tingling wave I have ever had. And since that day, I have never felt the same. Hi, Raven. A few months ago, I dropped a Mucinex, an anti-congestion pill, on the floor. I watched as it fell all the way to the ground, but lost sight of it as it landed. The pill, for those who aren't familiar, are fairly large and white in color, and, in theory, should have been very easy to spot on the dark carpet. Still, I assumed that it just took an odd bounce and must be nearby, so... I searched for it for about five minutes or so, before finally giving up. As I was standing there thinking about where else it could have possibly bounced to, I put my hands in my pullover sweater pocket and felt the unmistakable shape of the aforementioned pill in my right pocket. And this is where things get weird. I could feel the pill, but I couldn't remove it, because it wasn't inside my pocket, but rather inside of the cloth that makes up the pocket. I flipped the pocket inside out and could still feel the pill, but was unable to dislodge it, as it was quite literally on the inside of the material that makes up the pocket lining. At this point, I assumed that there must be a small hole inside my pocket, so I removed my sweater and spread it out flat on the floor. I put my hands on both the inside and outside of the pocket and tried to find a hole, but to no avail. There was no hole, and I had no way to explain how this pill was seemingly now sewn into my pullover. While I had no idea what the hell was going on, I knew that I should document the event, so I turned around and grabbed my cell phone off my desk. While I was trying to open up the camera app, Admittedly, I was a bit shaken at this point. In the corner of my eye, I noticed the large white pill sitting in the exact spot it had dropped originally. About six feet, or two meters, away from where it was before I turned around to grab my phone. I rechecked my sweater, which hadn't moved an inch, and it no longer contained a pill. To this day... It still doesn't have any sort of hole for a pill to fall into. After countless hours of thinking it through, I'm no closer to a logical explanation. Here's a bit of a mundane glitch, but a glitch all the same. One afternoon, my partner and I were driving along a dual carriageway, returning from Hertford, England, traveling east. The speed limit on this road is 70 miles per hour, and I expressed irritation at being stuck behind slow drivers doing under 50, trapping us in, unable to overtake. The culprit this time was a light blue car with rolled up plaid and tartan blankets in the back. My partner joked, I bet they're small and old, because most extremely slow drivers always turn out to be a tiny old person who could barely see over the wheel. As soon as I was able to overtake, sure enough, it was a little white-haired old man with an old woman in the passenger seat. Told you, my partner said, and we laughed. We approached a large roundabout at which we go all the way around to the right and onto another dual carriageway, south towards London. We were held there on a red light and joked that soon those old people will catch us up. And this is around about where, 
a quarter of the way around, I need to move from the right lane into the left at the next set of traffic lights. I looked in the mirror as I did so. No slow old people around, so I assumed they had either still not caught up, or they were taking the north exit towards Cambridge. Once the lights turned green, I was off. I went around, and I came down the on-ramp onto the next dual carriageway. About three minutes into this journey, we came up behind a slow-moving blue car with rolled-up tartan and plaid blankets in the back. And I had to overtake these same old people again. I exclaimed confusion about this. My partner simply nervously laughed with nothing to say. It completely defied logic. To be that far ahead of us, they would have needed to have sped past us at the traffic lights. There is no other way down onto that dual carriageway, no other road that could be used as a shortcut. The exits only go north, south, or west, yet they were still going slow. How could they not only catch up with me, but overtake me unseen and result in me still needing to overtake them again due to their crawling speed? Okay, so last night, something weird and completely unexplainable happened. So I'm 26. I live with my fiance, my brother, and my brother's fiance, and our house is weird. Like, the fridge will open with no one around, and then sometimes shut itself. One time I was home alone and left my room for five minutes because my brother's dog was freaking out, and when I came back, my ring light, that I hadn't used or even put together since we moved here months prior, was assembled and blocking the path to my bed. And one of the cats screamed like he'd seen some stuff, often when he's alone in the basement. My room used to be in the basement, but I moved upstairs after the ring light incident. Now, on to my glitch from last night. It was pretty late, close to midnight, but I really wanted to take a shower. I'll preface this with the fact that I was pretty tired, but I'm not confused. All was going well. I was listening to music and singing along the whole time, so I know that I didn't black out or anything. Anyway, I face away from the shower head unless necessary, so my back is to the shower. I have a leg up on the back of the tub, Lufa on hand washing my calf, and singing to that Christina Perry song a thousand years. And then, the Lufa just wasn't in my hand anymore. Confused, I looked to the hook where I always put my Lufa, but it wasn't there. I turn around completely, and I see it. My Lufa hooked on the knob that controls the water. A place that I have literally never put it, as we all have hooks in the shower. Like, it was there one second, and then it really was just gone. Poof. And I felt very weird after that. I can't explain the feeling. I'm pretty sure that nobody believes me in my house because I'm obsessed with glitch stories, especially your podcast, but this really happened, and I would love it if someone had an explanation. And thank you for listening to my story. This glitch happened to me several years ago, when I was 15 years old. I've often wondered if other people had similar experiences, and then, since listening to Raven's channel, I'm relieved to know that I'm not the only one who has experienced something very unusual. I was spending time at my grandparents' house, which consisted of six lightly wooded acres in the country. They had a nice barn and several other outbuildings, a small peach orchard, and they owned several horses and a couple of dogs. 
This was not an isolated area. The neighbor's house, outbuildings, chickens, and pet alpacas were clearly visible from my grandparents' property. After being out near the barn playing with the dogs one morning, I began to walk up the back steps to the house. For no particular reason, I glanced toward the neighbor's house next door. To my astonishment, there was no house. No outbuildings, no chickens, no alpacas, no trees. Just long prairie grass rippling in the wind. Confused, I looked towards my grandparents' barn. There was no barn. No dogs, no horses, no trees, just long, lush grass. I was no longer standing on the back steps, but on a flat prairie. The grass came up past my shoes, about halfway to my knees. I tried to comprehend what was happening, but I could no longer hear the familiar country sounds. I heard nothing but the wind passing through the seemingly endless prairie grass. It literally seemed to go on as far as I could see. I turned to look in the other direction, and suddenly everything snapped back into my regular reality. I was once again on the back steps, the dogs and horses were in the view, the neighbor's house was back in view, and their chickens and alpacas were going about their business, as if nothing unusual had occurred. I was astounded. I stood there for a few seconds, and then rushed into the back door. To my relief, everything was normal there in the house. My grandparents were getting ready for their day, preparing for breakfast, etc. This glitch, or whatever it was, has never happened again. Has anyone else had an experience like mine? Hey, Raven. I've been listening to your Glitch in the Matrix stories for some six months now, and I truly wondered at first if something like this even exists. But, having experienced a small glitch yesterday, I think that more spiritual people can experience bigger and apparently impossible glitches. So, my story revolves around a candy. I go to school and there's a weird canteen lady who gives candies instead of the change. So, on Friday, she gave me two candies in return for my eight rupees and change. I'd put them in the frontmost pocket of my school bag and didn't open the bag to take them out until Sunday morning. So, there I was in my bedroom with my mother. We were just talking and I started complaining to her about the canteen lady when I remembered about those candies. I walked up to my bag, which I usually keep on top of my books, on a table in my room. I forgot in what pocket I had kept them, and at first, I searched in the second to the front pocket. Now, a friend of mine had her birthday a few days ago, and in that pocket was another candy, which this friend had given to me. I took it out as well, and then opened the frontmost pocket. I clearly saw those two canteen candies. I clearly remember taking them out. Yes, I admit that I was a little absent-minded as I was talking to my mom, but I know that I had all three candies in my fist. I was closing the zipper when I suddenly felt a slight emptiness in my fist. I opened it, and there were only two candies the birthday girl's one, and then one of the canteens. At first, I thought I had dropped the other canteen candy. I searched in every area where I thought it might be, under the table, inside the dustbin on the side, under and behind the adjacent cupboard, between the piles of books, and I even double-checked those two back pockets. I found it nowhere. My mom suggested that I should ask the maid to find it when she would be cleaning the floor. I did ask her, but she didn't find it either. That candy just disappeared, right from inside my fist. So, I wonder, has it gone back to the weird canteen lady?
Hello, Raven. I've been wanting to submit a story for a while now, but my life's pretty boring, or I just don't notice some things. I've listened to almost every episode on Spotify, so I'm excited to hear my own story in an episode, and I hope that you enjoy. So, I had this necklace with a metal chain and a pink rose quartz crystal that I could hook on to the chain. I forgot where I bought it, but I'd had it for months at this point, with no issues. Eventually, I had broken the chain right where the little clip is, and I couldn't figure out how to fix the necklace, and I wasn't just going to throw it away. I had no other chain that could hold my crystal, so I thought of using super glue to connect the two ends of the chain while the crystal was still hooked onto it. That meant that I couldn't remove the crystal now, but the chain was long enough to just put it right over my head, so I didn't see a problem with it. I definitely underestimated how difficult it would be to hold the two ends still enough until the glue fully dried. So, I gave up after a few tries, and a lot of glue on my fingers and counter. On to the glitch part. I left the necklace alone for a while, until I was cleaning out my jewelry bowl and found it. When I did, it was fixed. The two ends couldn't have just fused together, right? I asked if anyone in my family had fixed it because they all knew that I was trying, but no one touched it. There's only three people in my house. My mom, my dad, and my brother. I really expected my brother to be the one to admit that he had fixed it, but he kept denying it. I don't know if he thought I was upset about it, but I was utterly confused. I couldn't wrap my head around it. The reason I think he felt that way is because I hate it when he touches my things, but I hadn't been rude or angry at all. My brother has autism, so even though I asked him in a confused way, he may still not have been able to tell if I was mad. Despite what I truly think, I believe my brother, and he and everyone else in the house denied touching or fixing the necklace. I can't wait for another episode. I hope that you enjoyed, and I hope that everyone has a spooky night. Hi, it's me again. So, I did want to first say that I had never told anyone else my story of my stalker from my old job, just Raven, saying that because I'd seen comments asking. Anyways, here's my glitch story. It's nothing big, just really odd. So, every night when I'm getting my girls ready from bed, my youngest gets a bottle of oat milk. I always ask beforehand because sometimes she changes her mind. She said that she wanted strawberry milk, so I said sure, as long as she brushed her teeth after. I sat her on the counter and we put the powder in the milk and popped it into the microwave for about 45 seconds. It went off, I grabbed it, shook it up, and then I picked her up and proceeded to walk towards their bedroom, making sure to grab a diaper to change her before she went to sleep for the night. But when I got to the room, the milk was gone. I had it, and her, in my hand when I grabbed the diaper because I had spilled a little bending down to get it. I go back by the diapers thinking, okay, maybe I left it when I spilled it down my arm a bit. Nope, not there. I look in the room to see if maybe she grabbed it, but... She was just sitting there. So I go back into the kitchen, and it's still there in the microwave, unmixed. It freaked me out because I knew that I picked her up after we mixed it. It even spilled down my arm, so how did it end up back in the microwave? I have zero explanation for this. Maybe I was just tired, I don't know, but the only thing I could think of was the milk glitches. But... Let me know what you guys all think.
Hi, Raven. My sister and I are big fans of your channel, and we're talking about our own glitch experiences, so I figured I would share them here. Story 1. My sister and I shared a room growing up, and we played together a lot. We had a toy oven in our room, and one day we decided to put one of our dolls in there. It was a blonde porcelain-type doll in a pretty dress. While the doll... baked, we both left the room and played in the living room. We were together the whole time. Eventually, we decided to check on our cooking and went to open the toy oven, and when we did, there was a completely different doll in there. It was now a Raggedy Ann doll with red yarn hair, stitches in her dress, and a soft body which is very different from the doll that we put in there. We were both shocked and confused. We looked for the original doll for years, and we never found it again. Even as adults now, we both swear that we did not switch the doll, and it still weirds us out. We have many other instances of lost objects, small toys, a ring, etc. disappearing, and being found under our front porch. But while we checked there a few times in hopes that it would reappear too, that doll seemed to glitch out of existence. And story two. One morning, my sister and I woke up and started talking about a weird dream that we'd had. Both of us dreamt that there was a figure standing in our front lobby. We could both recall hearing him and going down there to see him, and then hiding from him. If there really was an intruder... Why did we both wake up in our beds and both recall this as a dream? If it was a dream, why did we both share it that night? Hey Raven, just thought I would send you the first glitch that made me think there was more to this all than it appeared to be. I've experienced glitches my entire life. The first one I can recall was when I was less than 10 years old. I relived a dream where everything happened exactly the way that I dreamed it. This wasn't the last time that kind of glitch happened to me either. I've also dropped more things than I can remember that have disappeared before they even hit the ground. To me, this is just normal and somewhat annoying. Give me my stuff back. The story is more significant to me than any of those, because it hints that maybe we have more control over the glitches than we may think. I used to collect comic book-related trading cards back in the 90s. Any extra I would give to my friend, who is now my roommate. One day when I went to visit him, he said that he lost the three very rare hologram cards that I had given him the day before. He said he left them on the back part of the couch, and they disappeared. Of course, I asked if he checked behind the couch. He said that he pulled the couch completely away from the wall, and just nothing. They just vanished. I told him that the cards are there now, and to look again. I simply believed without a doubt in my mind that they would be there. It took a little convincing, but he looked, and there they were. To this day, he thinks that I brought them back. I later become his roommate in that place and had a rare Japanese trading card disappear when it fell between my bed and the wall. Even when we were moving out, it was nowhere to be found. I wish remanifesting would work on that card also. My friend and I see the same doctor, so we ride together. It takes approximately two hours to get there. On a stretch of highway between my house and the city where we hit the interstate, we get behind a very slow driver. My friend didn't have the opportunity to pass the slow-moving truck and was getting worried about being late for our appointment. I tell her not to worry and that we'll make it with time to spare. It takes about 45 minutes from my house to the interstate. We reach the exit and she tells me to look at the time. 
we made it in 13 minutes, which is absolutely not possible. We both kind of freaked out. We hit the interstate and head to our appointment, and we made it to the doctor's office with an hour to spare, which would have been impossible. We then realized that neither one of us remembers a very long stretch of the interstate that we hate to go through. It gets crazier. Before we left my house, she borrowed a pair of earrings from me that were silver, as she hates gold. On the way back home, I glanced over at her, and the earrings are now gold. I didn't say anything because it really messed with me. We got back to our town and she dropped me off and said that she would be back with my medication. When she returned, she looked like she was in shock. She asked me if I had noticed that the earrings were now gold. I told her that I had noticed earlier on the way home, but couldn't believe what I was seeing so I didn't say anything. This happened months ago, and we still get really creeped out whenever we talk about that day. I tell her that this is not the first time that I have experienced a glitch in the Matrix, but it still freaks me out every time. I've never experienced anything like what happened a few hours ago. I was scared at first, but now I'm just baffled. I usually have a pen and an eraser in my bed to write down my dreams in a diary. They're placed beside my pillow. This morning, I used them both in my bed, and then as I was done, I brought both the pen, eraser, and diary with me down from my bed. I sleep in a sort of bunk bed, so I have to climb up and down a ladder to reach the mattress. I sat down in my sofa and continued to write in my diary for a bit, and then I placed the items on my sofa table and started to pace around for a while. I clean a little, go to the bathroom, etc. Suddenly, my AirPods run out of battery, and as I remember that I left the case in my bunk bed, I climb up the ladder only to find out that my pen is on my bed. This baffles me, because minutes ago I sat in my sofa writing with that exact pen. The pen moved itself from my sofa several meters up to my mattress in my bunk bed. The pen is a unique pen that I only have one copy of. I live alone in my apartment, and I don't have any pets. I'm 100% sure that I didn't grab my pen and throw it up into my bunk bed. That wouldn't make sense, considering I was sitting in my sofa writing things down. I struggle with mental illness, bipolar... But I've never had hallucinations or experienced delusions before. I am healthy and I take my meds. When I grabbed the pen, it was solid. It was in fact in my bed, even though I didn't throw it up onto my bed. Does anyone have an idea of what this could be? Do I have to do something? A part of me is scared, and another part of me is like, it is what it is. Before I read this story, I want to give a shout-out to the author, Kathleen, because not only did she submit her experience, she did so and used the word of the week last week, which was murky. I'm not going to put the story on the end screen, but I'll give her a shout-out in the video itself, so good job on that, Kathleen. Now for the story. My boyfriend, Kenny, my two-year-old son, Jimmy, and I embarked on a road trip from New Mexico to California headed towards my home in Los Angeles. We had recently relocated to Silver City, New Mexico, and as we set off, the darkness of the late night or early morning surrounded us. Restlessness always plagued me during car rides due to my anxiety, especially at night. However, despite my struggle, sleep managed to engulf me without any recollection of drifting off. Kenny experienced the same sensation. He must have succumbed to slumber, yet neither of us remembered stopping to rest. Abruptly, our reality underwent a bewildering transformation. 
the world around us morphed into this crimson murkiness, accompanied by an unsettling clamor. The car continued its motion, and both Kenny and I shared an eerie premonition that we were hurtling towards a perilous cliff. Overwhelmed by shock, I muttered only a single question. What's happening? Kenny's bewildered response echoed mine. I don't know. For about half a minute, the cacophony, movement, and dust persisted until abruptly ceasing. To our astonishment, we found ourselves parked near a set of train tracks. Neither of us could recall pulling over or falling asleep. Our minds still clung to the belief that we were in the midst of driving towards the edge of a cliff. Thus unfolded this glitch in our reality. Meanwhile, my son peacefully slumbered in the back seat, blissfully unaware of the surreal experience that we had just encountered. I'm not sure if this would be a glitch story, or a paranormal story, but here it is. For several summers, I worked at my uncle's restaurant so that his employees could take turns at having vacations. I waited tables, washed dishes, mopped floors, and whatever else needed to get done. This was in West Texas, and the summers were very hot, often triple-digit temperatures for weeks. I had developed a system of cooling down every day when I got home. I walked the six blocks to my little apartment, came inside, and locked and deadbolted the door behind me, and stripped down naked in the front hallway. Then I went straight to the bathroom and had a nice long shower. After I got dressed in pajama shorts and a t-shirt, I went to the kitchen and made myself a tall glass of water with lots of ice. I sipped several glasses of water while watching my TV shows. My routine never varied. One day, I arrived home as usual, peeled off my sweaty, stinky shirt, jeans, socks, panties, and bra as usual, and headed to the bathroom for my shower. After dressing in my cool, comfy pajama shorts and a t-shirt, I went to the kitchen for my long-awaited ice water. I arrived in the kitchen and was about to get a glass from the dishwasher when something on the counter caught my attention. It was a tall glass of water filled to the top with ice, just as I always made it. It was slightly frosty on the outside, as though the glass had been in the freezer. I stood there for a minute trying to understand what had happened. I carefully walked around my apartment. Of course, nobody was there, and both doors were locked and deadbolted. Nobody else had keys to my apartment. I decided it was just a nice, sympathetic gesture from someone or something, and that I would accept it as such. I was grateful. I have no explanation for this incident, and it never happened again. My best friend and I watch movies together all the time. Sometimes just the two of us, sometimes with our group of friends. We had watched The Amazing Spider-Man sometime after it came out, just the two of us, and we both loved it. My friend in particular liked it, telling me how much better this one was than that Tobey Maguire trash, as he puts it. When The Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out, we were really looking forward to it, and it seemed okay for the first third of the movie, and then things suddenly took a turn. It seemed awful to us. We remember overacting in what to us at the time seemed like really bad direction. So bad that we had to stop and look some things up. This must not be the same director. It was. Did he have a drug issue or something during the making? He didn't. We watched the rest of the movie perplexed as to how the same actors and director ended up making such a terrible movie. More than a year later, perhaps a couple of years, I don't really remember how much later it was, 
but we decided to watch it again and give it a second chance. It was great from beginning to end. It was like a completely different movie. Good acting and direction, scenes I don't remember, and scenes that I can almost remember not being there. My friend and I both agreed that it seemed like a completely different movie, and that we must have slipped timelines or something, and now we reside in the universe where the sequel is also a great movie. If it was just me, I would write this off as corrupted memories being colored by a mood or expectation or something, but both of us had the exact same thing happen. The movie seemed to change for the both of us. To this day, we both cannot get over it, and we're on the lookout for things changing in movies that we've seen before. So far, nothing else except the classic Mandela effects other people also report. Like C-3PO's leg suddenly changing colors. Sky that was not moving twice in my lifetime. I saw a person pass by and then saw them again pass by, like as if they were on a loop. And three weeks ago, I was waiting for the public bus, and I saw it coming down the street. It stopped at a light, and it drove past a tall and not-so-wide bush, but it never turned onto my road, and it never continued down the road that it was traveling on. I asked the boy behind me if he saw the bus, and he said no, that he was playing a game on his phone, and then he checked the time. He said that it wasn't coming yet, that it would be there in seven minutes. I looked back at the same road, and here it was, coming back down the road again. It stopped at the light, and when it finally started to move forward behind that tall but not so wide bush, it again did not come out of the other end. That's when I realized that something was happening. Yesterday, I was chilling in my room and I heard my door creep open slowly and someone walking down the stairs slowly. I could hear their hand rubbing on the wall to keep balance. I locked myself in my room and I could hear the person start walking slowly in my kitchen. I texted my father and asked if he was the one who came into my house, since he was the only one with my key knowing that I locked the door, and he said no. I asked him to come to my house right then. In only a few moments, he showed up at my house. I came out of my room, and I quickly scanned every inch of my house. No one. But my dad said my door was unlocked. He left, and we both made sure that the door was locked, and I locked myself in my room. Thinking about what I'd heard, I realized that... That's how I myself come into my own house, late at night, so as to not disturb the neighbors in the building. So, now I'm left to believe that this was a glitch. I believe I heard another me walk into my own house. I work in a warehouse, and one of my jobs is to shrink wrap skids of electronics using a machine with a turntable. The machine is used by just one other person besides me, and it's in a remote part of the warehouse that is seldom visited. This is an important detail to remember. There's a platform next to the machine where a box cutter and a pair of scissors rest, which are used to cut the shrink wrap after the skids are wrapped. One day, I had several skids to shrink wrap, so throughout the morning I would arrive at the machine with a skid, wrap it up, and then use the scissors to cut it. But later in the day, after wrapping up another skid, I looked on the platform and only saw the box cutter. The scissors were gone. At first I was annoyed because I preferred using the scissors. But after using the box cutter, I began to wonder what exactly happened to the scissors. I figured I must have absent-mindedly taken them back with me the last time I was there. So, back I went to my work area with my wrapped skid, 
and no sooner do I get there do I completely forget to look for the scissors. Anyhow, about half an hour later, I returned to the machine with a new skid to wrap, and when I glanced at the platform, there were the scissors, right there in their usual place. I began to wonder what happened because I was quite certain that I hadn't put them there. I considered the possibility of someone who needed the scissors took them away and later returned, all when I wasn't there. However, this really didn't add up. As I said before, this area was rarely visited by anybody, meaning few if any people would even know the scissors were there. And even if someone who had seen them before was in need of a pair, Logic argued that he or she wouldn't have even thought about that pair. Instead, it would make more sense to visit one of the multiple office areas in the warehouse to get one. So, I can't be 100% certain if any glitch took place. However, believe it or not, it seems to be the more likely explanation. My reality either underwent a major update, glitched out, or I've slipped into a different reality entirely. It started with noticing a few little things that could be put down to the Mandela effect. I swear that in the reality I grew up in, Worcestershire sauce was spelled Worcestershire, with an H after the C. And it isn't a rare condiment that I only had passing familiarity with. It was a major component of my mom's cooking, and was frequently on the table. I would call it Worcestershire in my head for my whole life. The same way people will think Wednesday when they write Wednesday, even long after they've learned to spell it. I remarked on the spelling change to my husband, and he looked at me like I was an idiot who just didn't know how to spell. Apparently, it's Worcester, Massachusetts here, too. Although, even with the CH spelling in my old reality, it was still pronounced Worcester. Those little things made me feel like maybe I was just losing my mind. But the other day, I was sitting at the light at an intersection that I drive through daily, and sometimes several times a day and I noticed a sign that I had never seen before, and then realized that a different sign was missing. I've lived in this neighborhood for seven years. There's not much that I haven't seen around here in that time, but I had never seen a faded, weathered white sign on a rusty leaning post that had an arrow directing people to a St. Francis Medical Center. What was there in my reality was a normal blue hospital sign, the kind with the big capital H, with a smaller sign below with an arrow, and the current, and much more unique, name of the facility below that. There have been some more subtle changes in people, places, and things, but I can't really discuss it with anyone I know in real life, because they think I'm half loony already, without telling them something even I wouldn't believe if it weren't happening to me personally. So, here we are. Hi, Raven. I want to start by saying that I love your channel and that you get me through a lot of lonely nights on my overnight job, and that I really appreciate that. Well, of course, very happy to help. Ironically enough, it's at my job where my story takes place. It's not the longest or even most chilling story, but I wanted to contribute in some small way. Anyway, I'm a receptionist who does the overnight, night audit, shift, at a four-star hotel. It's not old or anything, it's actually quite modern. And to be clear, I have never touched any types of drugs, and only drink alcohol on my days off. So, there was nothing inhibiting me at all. One night, in the middle of the night, probably 2 or 3 a.m., I was doing my regular duties. 
one of which was to give the floors a mop to get them respectable the next day. The whole back wall of the foyer area is a huge mirror. Like, the entire wall is literally a mirror. Anyways, I was doing my cleaning when I look up and my reflection in this mirror was much bigger than it should have been. As if I was standing nose to nose with it, when I was about 40 feet away from it. And it was standing and watching me, not doing what I was doing. It only lasted a second or two before I looked away and looked back and it was being normal again, but it stuck with me. That was many years ago, and I've been working here for well over a decade now, and that's the strangest thing to ever happen on my shift. Although, there have been other minor things. It's strange noises, bumps in the night, flickering lights at 3am while listening to a scary story about 3am on another YouTube channel. But nothing that I can't give a rational explanation to or say that it's just a coincidence like that. However, I've thought about this for years, and even looked at the same mirror. It's pretty hard to avoid, literally thousands of times, and never had another glitch like that one. Anyways, that's my story. What does everyone else think? Possible glitch in the Matrix? Something paranormal trying to spook me? Could there really be something on the other side of the mirror? I swear that this account is completely true, and is indeed my own personal experience. Have a good day, friends, and please, share those stories. My keys disappeared, and then reappeared like nothing was wrong. This happened last week, and I know how it sounds, and you could easily dismiss this as I just misplaced them for a while, but it felt like so much more than that, and it just didn't make sense. To get a sense of the place that I live, it's on the third floor, and for access you need a key for the gate on the second floor. It's a small individual apartment and there's one bedroom, one bathroom, and then the kitchen and living area. So, it's a small place with just the basics. It was just a regular evening. I was waiting for a friend of mine to come because I was lending him my camera for work. When he arrived, I grabbed the camera and was reaching for the keys and noticed they're not in their place. Like a lot of people, I have a particular spot where I leave them. I thought to myself, well, maybe I left them on the sofa. At first glance, they're not there. I clean up the sofa, and nothing. Now, this sofa is a cheap one. There's no cracks where your stuff could fall in. I look in the kitchen, my bedroom, and I can't find them. The more time passes, I start to feel very uneasy. I'm getting this weird headache, and feeling just general weirdness. My friend's been waiting for like 20 minutes, and my neighbor comes so I can take the chance to go out and give my friend the camera so he can go. I go back to my apartment and turn everything upside down. I moved the fridge, the stove, undid my bed, the pillows, crawled around the whole floor checking under everything. I double-checked everything that I checked. I even checked to see if I somehow left them stuck to the door. They were nowhere to be found. I thought that I was losing my mind. It felt like I was going crazy. The headache wasn't going away, and I felt like I was losing balance. Finally, I said, I need to calm down and just rest for a moment. I took a pillow and laid on the sofa, and I fell asleep for like 15 minutes. When I got up, my headache was gone. I moved the pillow and heard the sound of the keys. I quickly lift the pillow and they were there. It was as if they were there the whole time and I just somehow didn't see them. Of course, this made no sense to me and I can't explain what happened without sounding crazy. Did my keys glitch to another place and then come back to me? I just feel like I need to share this somewhere so I don't feel like it's stuck with me.
pile. I'll start by saying that I'm the biggest skeptic that I know, but the following story is 100% true, and I have no idea how to explain it. So, my wife and I live in Liverpool, England, and have friends in Newcastle, which we visit about three times a year. We always take the same route, which is straight up the country on a motorway, then straight across the country on an A road, kind of like a right angle. We take the same route every time we go, and I know it like the back of our hand. So much so that we always have a pub lunch at the same place on the A road on our way to see our friends. On the day in question, everything was fine on the motorway, and my wife rang the pub to book our table for our lunch. A lady answered and booked us in. Now, this is where it gets strange. We exited the motorway and pulled onto the A road. Normally, when we start to drive down this A road, we drive through a village with picturesque cottages and guest houses. But the road was deserted. Also, there were no cars but ours on this road. We started to get concerned and pulled over. I got out of the car and walked around where the town should have been. It was eerily quiet, and there wasn't a house, cottage, or anything else in sight. My wife said, let's just carry on to the pub and get some lunch. So we carried on, and where the pub should have been, it was just wasteland. Not even a hint that the pub was there. Now, absolutely panicking, we drove as quickly as we could to our friend's house, which was still an hour away. But after about 20 minutes, we started to notice cars again on the road, and we got to our friends and told them about the incident. They said that we probably just turned off at the wrong exit and laughed it off. We had a good weekend, and on our way home, I told my wife to ring the pub and we'll just have our lunch on the way home instead. So, she rang the pub and booked us in. This is the thing that has haunted me since it happened. When we got there, we were greeted by a young waitress who said it was lovely to see us again. I said, I don't think we've met, have we? And she said that we were in on Saturday for lunch. We made our excuses and we left straight away. We still don't talk about it. Hi Raven, as I was listening to one of your Glitch in the Matrix videos, I remembered one of my own glitches that I had back when I was a teenager. I was 17, at home alone one weekend, and I wanted a treat. I found a box of cupcake mix, and I decided to make them. My kitchen is average sized, there's an island that sticks out to the left, and the rest of the cabinets and sink are across the room to the right. I set the box of cupcake mix on the island to the left, and crossed the kitchen to grab a mixing bowl. When I turned around to set the mixing bowl down on the island, the cupcake mix was gone. I didn't hear anything fall, but still my first thought was that it must have fallen on the ground. I looked, and it wasn't on the ground. I'm immediately confused and my heart is starting to race. I felt very unnerved and stood there looking around the kitchen for a moment. I remember saying out loud, what the hell? My second thought was, did I just lose time and have some sort of mental episode? To be clear, I have no mental illness and never had anything like this happen again. I wasn't sleep deprived, I wasn't on any mind altering substances, no one was home so there's no way that someone moved it, if they had moved it, I would have been very obvious. I would have heard and seen someone in the kitchen with me. So. I snap out of freeze mode and I immediately start tearing through every cabinet and drawer. Right as I'm about to give up, I open the cutlery drawer, and there it is. The flipping box of cupcake mix. 
laid flat, face up on top of my forks and spoons and knives. I literally set that box down on the kitchen island, turned around for less than 15 seconds to grab a bowl, and somehow that cupcake mix poofed into a closed cutlery drawer across the room that hadn't been opened the entire time this event took place. Why? How? What exactly was that? I'm open to any suggestions. And to Raven, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the wonderful stories you share and the calming delivery of these stories. I discovered your page when I was going through a hard time and listening to you read transported my mind, and it soothed my soul. Forever grateful and always looking forward to your next video. Signed, Renee. Well, Renee, thank you very much for those kind words, and I'm very happy to have helped. And also, I hope the cupcakes were good. Where I used to work, there was a bar with a large cloakroom slash toilets. These were down the end of the bar where weird stuff had always happened. Previously, a staff member's very young child had seen ghost children and asked why they were laughing at him and why the man there was looking at him. They'd been the only ones in the building. Laughter has been heard in the empty toilets when a member of staff checked around before locking up and the shadows of feet seen walking past in the light under the closed door. However, in the many years that I have worked there, I had never personally experienced anything odd until this occurrence. During lockdown, the owner had taken the opportunity to redecorate, and we all pitched in to help. The ladies' toilets had already been repainted and retiled, and the owner had been putting up decorative finishing touches. I went in to use the facilities, and as I was about to leave the cloakroom area, I noticed the owner had put up a new, very large gold ornate mirror next to the door. It was big, and so striking that it stopped me in my tracks in surprise. I just wasn't used to seeing a mirror there. It was then that I noticed my reflection, and that my gold chain necklace was missing. I always wear a gold chain. It's fairly long, the box-shaped links catch the light, and are reasonably sized. We're not talking Mr. T size here, but it's not a fine chain either. I was wearing a lowish scoop neck top that day, and had short hair at the time, so its absence was obvious against my skin. The fastening on the chain had been a bit dodgy for a while, but I'd fixed it before lockdown, but the repair wasn't great, and it needed redoing when things reopened, so I assumed it had fallen off. Kicking myself for still wearing it before I had gotten it fixed properly, I retraced my steps and checked in the toilet stall. No joy. So then I turned around to head back to the door, passing the mirror to head into the bar to try to find it. Reaching for the door handle... It was then that I had that feeling that you get when someone standing behind you puts a necklace around your neck to fasten it. The feeling of cold metal on my skin. I turned and looked back in the mirror, and there it was. I still cannot rationalize this. It was just not there. There was no hiding place, like in my hair or behind clothes or whatever. And then it was just back. The usual stuff to mention, I was not under the influence of anything, and it was first thing in the morning, so I wasn't really tired. But glitch in the matrix? Faulty new mirror? <laughs> Who knows? The chain has been fixed now, just to make sure. My fiancé has a bag that she brings to and from work with her computer. She decided to do some overtime, so she asked me to grab the computer and set it up. I said okay, and did as she asked. I couldn't find the mouse. I looked in every crevice of the bag, and when I brought it up, 
She was confused as well as she very well remembered putting it all the way. She also checked the bag with no luck. We looked in our small apartment and couldn't find it. She said whatever and just did her work. The next day, she asked me to grab some chapstick out of her bag, and lying in the bag in the big zipper pocket was, you guessed it, the mouse. I know that she wouldn't have pranked me or something, because it's so random, and she's not like that. I've recently really been into glitches, and I thought about one happening to me, and, well, I guess it happened. This happened to me yesterday. I noticed that one of my many pictures had become detached from what it was stuck to, so I decided to change the blue tack. This I did noticing that one or two were loose, so I changed them as well. I then slid the poster holder back over the top, only to see some of the pictures had come loose again. So, off came the holder and with it the removable hook which I took and laid on the arm of the chair promptly fell off onto the floor. I heard the damn thing land. After resticking the pictures, I looked for the hook on the floor, and it's not there. Now, I'm in an area of about three foot squared, and it couldn't have gone far. I moved the chair, the table, the boxes behind the chair, and I've hoovered knowing the hook is too big to be sucked up. It's not there. You can't miss a plastic hook with a green tie on a red carpet. And, as I said, I'm still looking for it. I've never experienced a glitch myself until last week. I bought a biscuit mix a few months back. Last week, my mom found it in the pantry and asked me to make it because she was in the mood for biscuits. I went to get it out because she told me it was right in the front. The biscuit mix was not in the front where she said it was. I looked on the shelf where all of our mixes are and it wasn't there. I looked on all of the other shelves and it wasn't on any of them either. I was very confused. I figured that she might have just put it in the fridge while looking for the other ingredients to make them. It wasn't in there either. I looked in the can cupboard and it wasn't there. I finally looked on all of the counters in case it was out and I missed it. It wasn't in any of the locations in the kitchen or anywhere in the rest of the house. I gave up and just made some from scratch. The biscuit mix? has not made an appearance as of this point, and I hope to find it someday, but I have a feeling that I just never will. This isn't a glitch that happened directly to me, but it makes me grateful that I'm in the universe with a happy ending. My dad just told me something that happened to my grandma. My grandma has Parkinson's disease, which causes her to walk very wobbly. Given how her bones have become weaker from the disease, if she were to significantly fall down, things would not be good. About a year ago, my grandma was walking down the stairs to her basement, and when she was three steps from the bottom, she fell down the stairs. But, in the blink of an eye, she was just sitting on the floor normally, completely fine, not in any pain, no blood, just completely fine. I wonder, what if she did fall, pass away in a different timeline but was transferred to the universe that I'm in? She says that it was her guardian angel looking out for her, but I think it may have been quantum immortality until it's her destined time to go. This adds to my theory that every human lives a beautiful life until they're in their 90s or 100s, when it's time to peacefully pass on. So 
So, my mom is an artist. She has a lot of issues with pain, so to buy her some drawing pens, the kind that you buy on their own with detachable lids, I took her with me in the car, but I went into the store and I bought them for her. I came out and handed four of them to her. They were on their own and unpackaged. In the store, I had noticed the lids weren't great, and as she was looking at them in the car while I was driving, two of the lids fell into the footwell where she was sitting in the passenger seat of my car. I saw this out of the corner of my eye, and we decided to finish driving home, and then we would get the lids to put them back on. So we get home, and I get out to take something out of the back seat, and there's one of the lids on the back seat. There's no logical way that this could have happened, unless the lid rolled and then bounced up to get into the seat. But I feel that it would have taken a lot of bumps for the lid to get from the floor to the seat. The other lid was still in the front passenger footwell. It left us both puzzled, and as these are special pens, it was definitely the lid for that exact pen. I'm writing this as soon as possible so I don't forget any details, but anyways, I'm a teenager and me and my family always either do our own thing or hang out. No in-betweens. I was in my room hiding my snacks under my bed when I see my dog. He's a large husky, so he can't go unnoticed or be missed when he walks into a room. I saw him, and I said, Hi, baby boy. As I lift my hand to pet him, he ran away like he was scared. I love my dog, so I ran after him so that I could calm him down. I assumed that he went into the living room, and when I enter, I see my mom petting him, laying on the couch. I ask my mom, How long has he been there? She replied, A few minutes. Why? I started freaking out, as I asked my mom if he ran in here, and she said, No, I got out of the shower a few minutes ago, and we've been watching TV. Is something wrong? I tell my mom what happened, and we can't explain it. I swear that I saw my dog, and I don't suffer from any mental illnesses. This story can really only be explained as a glitch in the Matrix. I work in a plant that makes trailers. Some are made of aluminum, some of stainless steel. These trailers are used to transport food or chemicals with trucks. And the whole process is done in this plant, from shaping the metal to welding, cleaning, and spray painting. The last part is placing the tank on the chassis, attaching the wheels and other accessories. My job is the chemical cleaning of the stainless steel tanks. At the time, I had put a ladder against the tank to get on top, which is about 4 meters high, or 13 feet. The part where the ladder touches the tank was a bit tricky, because there was little room to place your foot. One day, I climbed the ladder carrying a spraying pump in one hand. I reached the spot where I could just place the tip of my foot, and I slipped. But the next thing I remembered... I was standing back at the bottom of the ladder with the pump still in my hand, and no recollection of a fall. I was completely confused how this was possible. A colleague could not understand either, and said that I could have been killed or seriously injured. The situation was taken up with security, and now I have a completely safe platform to get on top of the tank. I like to think that it just wasn't my time to die and my guardian angel stepped in. Nor was it a glitch in the Matrix. In the summertime, one of my neighbors has a yearly garage sale that takes place on Friday and Saturday. 
my family usually checks it out, as my neighbor has a niece about my age, and sometimes she contributes cute clothes that I like to look at. It's also common for my dad to state that he saw them setting up for the garage sale on his drive home from work. Years ago, it was the weekend of the garage sale. The night before we went to it, I had a dream that I looked into a tub of wallets. I picked up a wallet, opened it, and found money inside. After waking up, I forgot about the dream for a while until later. My family arrived at the neighbor's garage sale, and it started out normal. After looking through some clothes, I saw a basket with wallets and small purses. I then remembered my dream and picked up a wallet. I thought it would be cool if I opened it and found money inside, like the dream. And, as you're probably expecting, I opened the wallet, and boom. There was seven dollars inside the wallet. I used the money to purchase my items at the sale and went on with my life. It wasn't until recently that I realized that my dream literally came true. The power of the human brain is... spooky. When my children were younger, I rarely got any time to myself. One weekend morning, I woke early and decided to go downstairs and have a peaceful coffee. I grabbed my phone from the bedside table and quietly made my way to the kitchen. I started the coffee and decided to flip through my phone while I waited. I couldn't find it. I looked around the kitchen and living room and thought that I must have left it upstairs, but I didn't want to go back up and wake anyone, so I left it. I made my coffee and looked at the jigsaw on the kitchen table that I had finished the night before. It had one piece missing, and I searched for it unsuccessfully before going to bed. I groaned at how annoying it was, and went into the living room to watch the news on TV. I couldn't find the remote control. I put my coffee on the coffee table and got down and looked under the sofa, and then I pulled up the seat cushions and checked under them. Then, I looked everywhere else. Nothing. I finished my coffee in silence and went back into the kitchen with my mug. I said out loud, Okay, the joke's over. Put my things back. I rinsed the mug and went back to the living room. There, on the sofa, exactly where I had been sitting drinking my coffee, was my phone, the TV remote, and the jigsaw piece, all in a row on the seat. I whispered thank you, because I didn't know what else to do. Hey, I have a second story. The story is about my cousin who asked me to submit it. When he was about 18, he was looking at universities in the west of England. My aunt drove him to an open day from their home in Bishop Stortford, Hertfordshire, to Worcester. This journey takes about two and a half to three hours. They left at 9 a.m., arriving at Worcester University just before 12, and had lunch on campus. The open day consisted of a tour that began at 1 p.m., followed by a Q&A session with whoever would be running the courses you were considering and then a chance to pick up leaflets and a goodie bag of stationery. All of this took less than two hours. It was about 10 to 3 when they departed, glad to be leaving early enough to beat the peak hour traffic outside Birmingham. Their journey was normal. It felt like the same amount of time as the outgoing journey. Only, upon returning, all of their clocks, both in the car and in the house, said it was just half past three. There had been no 5 p.m. traffic jams as they had re-entered Bishop Stortford, which is a small, heavily congested town. There is no way that they could have done that journey in just 40 minutes. It's impossible. 
There are two alternative routes to Worcester, but they take more than three hours. They spend days afterwards feeling completely bewildered. Today is Monday, July 24th, 2023, and I had something happen to me again that I have no rational explanation for. Over the past two or three years, I've been looking for a box that has a kitten on it, and my mom bought it for me in September of 1998, when I was 18 years old. On to the glitch. I was upstairs in my mom's house looking for this box that has a kitten on it, and I went through like six or so large totes and couldn't find it. I went to this gray tote to look into it, and I didn't find it there. Right next to it was a larger red tote. I looked through it and still couldn't find it. I kid you not, I looked right back over at the gray tote, and there was my box with a kitten on it, laying upside down on the gray toad. Like I said, I looked in the gray toad first, and then the larger red toad next. It's like it just appeared out of nowhere. My mom was downstairs and was the only person in the house, and I doubt anyone in my family would play a practical joke on me. I'm totally bewildered, and I'm trying to find a rational explanation for it, but... I can't. Over the past several months, I started watching glitches in the Matrix, and I have had several things that I mentioned in another video that I can't find a rational explanation for either. Does anyone have any idea what this might be?